Icaray. Please don't get up yet. What? What happened? You were in a coma. Can you remember your name? No. Yes, I'm Tessa. Good. Do you know what happened? Oh, my head. It's like it's been split in two. Was I in an accident? Yes. Can you remember any of it? Not really. I know I woke up in a sleeping pod. Then tell me everything you do remember from the start. I was freezing. That's the first thing I noticed. That's when I knew something was wrong. It's not reacting! Uh, oh. What? Mark? Mark? Where are you? Something's wrong here. Have we crashed? Ugh, oh, my whole body hurts. His sleeping pod is empty. He probably got woken up by the system after the crash and must have ran to the cockpit. He could have woken me up too. I should look for him and- uh, Ow! Ugh! Oh, damn it, I'm stuck. All I can move is my arm. Sharp and pointy. I have to be careful with it. The cover is torn. I can see the foam padding. Pulled out a large piece. Yes, that works! Now I can hold it without cutting myself. Come on, I have to get out of here. Finally. 
First of all, I need to get my spacesuit on. Oh, it's freezing. Ah, so that's why it's cold. The nitrogen tubes have burst and they're freezing everything. I'm definitely not dressed for the occasion. I'm cold enough as it is. I should probably wait on this. Mark? Cockpit, this is Tessa. Mark, can you hear me? Cockpit, this is Tessa! No reply. That either means there's a technical problem or Mark is... I need to get to the cockpit now. Damn it. This is worse than I thought. Why did we crash? The guidance system should have been able to prevent it from happening. At least it's not smoking as much up here. Mark and I can fix this. I'm sure. We have to fix this. Mark? <sighs> the cockpit is blocked by Rebel. Maybe he's injured and trapped in there. At least that would explain why he isn't responding. Okay, Tessa. What to do? Maybe go at it from the outside? No nosy neighbors in sight, but I should put on the spacesuit as long as I can't be sure if there's any breathable air out there. It's in the locker next to the sleeping pods. Hmm, that's a lot of debris. There should be something there that I could use. A thin, pointy piece of metal. A few bolts. I'll just take all of it. The hull is torn. I can see the insulating foil, but I can't get it out. Sometimes you just have to break things even more before you can repair them. That's the door to the hold, but it won't open. I need to find another way forward. The card reader for the hold door. I need an ID card to use it. Cables are broken, and the insulation is gone. I have to be careful. A crate. Standard color. Standard size. Standard contents. Empty. <sighs> Locked. I can see a lock at the front with an almost round keyhole. This pipe transports nitrogen, which is freezing the locker from the back. It is controlled via a valve. That might have stopped the nitrogen. The console is broken. I think I know how to repair it. But I need my suit, or I'm toast. There's disinfectant inside that we have to use before going into cryosleep. Easily flammable. I should be glad if I didn't wake up as a human torch. That's Mark's cryopod. Looks like it's intact and unharmed, but there's no sign of him. This pipe leads to a tank where cooling fluid is filtered. It must have burst in the crash. The sieve might be useful, even when it's taken apart. The ice is too thick and sturdy to just scratch it away. Looks like a bowl, but it's actually a sieve. Liquid would just seep right through. Done! I've had to improvise a lot of bowls in the past few years, and I think this one is my second best.
I should be able to use this to collect and transport the disinfectant. That was easier than I expected. <laughs> Finally, some heat. Almost too much heat. Ah, uh, uh, my eyes are burning. This should hopefully thaw the ice if I have enough fuel. <laughs> it's working. Oh, that's nice. So comfy and warm. Watch out, foreign planets. You can't scare me anymore. Well, at least not with cold temperatures. But I won't put the helmet on until I go outside. There's something in these pockets. Key, matches, and... Hmm. Our company's ID card. But the name on it is... Melissa Luna? Who's that? But that's definitely me in the picture. So, this company can send rockets through space but then prints the wrong name on my ID card? No wonder we crashed if they can't even get that right. Before I start looking for Mark again, I should write down my experiences on my ID card's logbook. Well, IMC's accident protocol requires me to do so. And we've definitely had an accident. I'll just use this one. Strange. This data is pretty similar to mine. It's almost a complete match. But the numbers in the date of birth are shifted by one. One day, one month, one year. But the biometric data is correct. I'm sure the picture is wrong. And the other thing is a coincidence? I don't recognize the name though. Weird. I shouldn't be wasting my time with this. Examine planet, find Mark, repair ship, survive. That's all that matters. Focus, Tessa. A detached metal bar. I can't reach it. Perfect fit. Ah, a toolbox. I mean, I hope it's a strange packet with an interstellar radio device. What do we have here? Screwdriver, sealant foam, and a blowtorch. I need to insert the cables into the sockets to make the door work again. There's a lamp for each socket to show if it's receiving enough electricity. Okay, the cables are where they should be. Now I can try the outer door again. I'm excited to see what's out there. Or, I would be if I wasn't in this situation. Access denied. Strange. That's my card, and the bioscanner should confirm that it's me, and that I have access. Something isn't right here. A 
crate. Standard color, standard size, standard contents, empty. I'd better put on the helmet, just to be sure. I hope the door survived the crash. Yes! It's seen better days, but it's open. Yes, I can reach it with that. I can't combine or fix them. I can't combine or fix them. 
up. It's long enough, but I can't find a good entry point. I can't combine or fix them. A bit wobbly. If I could fasten it properly, the pole would have a pointed flat edge that I could use. Good. That works. This helmet isn't equipped with welding goggles, but it should at least keep my eyes from melting. Mark would say otherwise. Show off. This is where the mechanism should be. Come on. <sighs> Mark would have been able to help me here. Emergency signal. 
low energy. Emergency signal cannot be activated. 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 Damn it! Do something! You could at least make a little noise! <sighs> if only Mark was here. I need more power to send an emergency signal. Which means... power cells. There should be some in the hold. logbook. An old version, but he likes things retro. Maybe I can find some answers in it. It's not completely intact anymore. I'll remove the ID card, then I can read the entries in my logbook. Forgetful fly a spaceship. I'm in. But what is all this stuff? I should stay away from it. But all the technical equipment is down there. Most importantly, the power cells. And with it, my only hope of sending out an emergency signal. There's gas leaking into the hold through this hole. I can't seal it with my bare hands. It won't work while the gas is coming out with this much force. I wonder if I can find anything here. No, those are various ores. Raw materials for a refinery. They're no use to me. Carbon dioxide filtered out of the air is stored here and released whenever needed, and it's pretty heavy in concentration form. It might be able to push this smoke up. Tank number one is still about 40% full and emptying very slowly. It's going to take hours for all the gas to release. Tank number two is filled with carbon dioxide. It's about 1.2% full and stable. Looks like it wasn't damaged in the crash. If I open tank two, the gas will be gone within minutes. Yes, it's pushing the strange gas up, but there's still something coming through the leak.
can't stop the gas from coming in with this. I hope the carbon dioxide will push the gas up now, but I shouldn't be here when that happens. Four or five minutes should be enough, but after that I need to ventilate the room well. It worked! Mark isn't down there either, but neither is his body, so that's good. Did he get ejected? Did he leave? If so, where to? Pull yourself together, Tessa. So what? He's not here. You can manage on your own. All you need for an emergency signal are power cells. Okay, this is the last straw. Goodness, lots of junk, but no power cells. What now? What's this? Oh, a Cognitive Observation Research Entity, or CORE for short. We use these things to reach places we can't get to ourselves. They can fly, scan, send data, and are equipped with a speech module. I need an ID card to activate the drone. Maybe it could help me out of this situation. And even if it can't, at least I'll have someone to talk to. Then I can complain to Kor while I'm starving. Cognitive Observation Research Entity. Core. I need an ID card to activate. Unit activated. Assigned to Melissa Luna, Explorer. Good day. Core ready to assist you, Miss Luna. Incorrect. Tessa Carter. That's my name. Name change. Tessa Carter. Confirmed. I am glad to be of service, Ms. Carter. What are your orders? Where should we begin? Nine leaks, four hull breaches, two broken beams, fourteen. One broken spaceship, one survivor. Maybe two. I hope so anyway. That's all that matters now. What is your primary objective, miss? For you to stop being so formal with me. Just call me Tessa. Of course. Altering linguistic database. Tessa. Right. The next objective is to send out an emergency signal. But I can't do that without power cells, and I have to find Mark. So, basically, if I want to get us out of this mess, I've solely got primary objectives. I do not have access to the ship's database. Who is Mark? Mark Bennett, about 30 years old, pilot and mechanic. We're the TAC-92's crew. Registered. What is the status of your immediate surroundings? Well, I have to take a closer look. My scanners could help in examining your surroundings. Good idea. Do that. Nine leaks for all breaches. I know this thing's broken. I meant the surroundings. Let's just scan it outside. Confirmed. <laughs> the tanks have been emptied completely, and there is nothing of use in the crates. 
Whatever we are going to find on the planet, we can probably store it here. Analyzing atmosphere outside the ship. Result, similar to Earth's atmosphere, breathable for humans. You can take off the helmet, Tessa. Good, I prefer it this way. It smells slightly burnt, but with the wind coming from over there, it kind of smells like stagnant water. Better than this canned air, anyway. Okay, here's the plan. We look for life, for some water and food, of course. And maybe keep our eyes peeled for any buildings or anything useful. No idea how long I'm gonna have to survive out here. The Intergalactic Mining Corporation should have already sent out a search party. I doubt it. Mark and I are just the advance guard, and it's not unusual for us not to be able to send reports. We don't have a set route, either. They'll start looking for us eventually. Eventually. And by then, I'll probably be talking to a volleyball. They do not understand what it has to do with this crash. Never mind. Please scan our surroundings. Scanning. Scan complete. Scan radius of about 400 meters. No signs of relevantly sized life forms. No artificial constructs or buildings. Relevantly sized? And what size is relevant to you? Anything bigger than a fully grown male Balinese toucan. A what? A male Balinese toucan. Their average size in all dimensions roughly represents that of the average sized, fully grown earthen life form. <laughs> You're joking, right? Statistics are not a joke. Well, that doesn't help me. Compare the data to something I know. No more than eight letters. Equivalent to a medium-sized dog. Equivalent to a chicken 49.9% larger than average. Equivalent to exactly 11 hedgehogs. To recap, a Balinese toucan is roughly the size of one and a half chickens. Any more data? The environment is mostly comprised of stone. Water and simple flora can also be detected behind the landing zone. No signs of Mark? Damn. My mineral samples can wait. We should look for water and plants. New data! I am registering a weak but repeating radio signal. Where is it coming from? It originates from the planet's surface. The signature is inconclusive. Could it be coming from the Intergalactic Mining Corporation? The possibility of that lies at 29%. Can you locate it? I can only ascertain a rough direction. To interpolate a position, we would have to get closer. I guess I don't really have a choice. Let's see what's behind it. Maybe it's a distress signal from Mark. <sighs> Incredible. I know why I love my job. Without it, I wouldn't be able to see things like this. We followed the crash's progression. These must be the plants you were talking about. Well, they're not flowers, Core, let me tell you. More of a smelly swamp. I do not categorize flora and fauna by their feel-good factor, unless you wish to update my software accordingly. In that case, I would request the following hardware as well. Arms. Okay, forget it. At least it's not just rocks again. What are those tiny lights? Small life forms. Interesting. A good sign there might be more to this planet. If we flew over this place with the TAC-92 before we crashed, could something have fallen from the ship that's now emitting the signal? Theoretically. But the ship's inventory was complete, so the signal I am receiving cannot originate from a technical device known to us. We can't get any closer. We need to get down there. You could slide and climb down those rocks there, but they are quite steep and porous, so you could not get back up again. So a one-way ticket then. 
My recommendation. Remaining within the TAC-92. The ship's hull offers protection and Mark could return, then you would no longer be on your own. It would be easier for you to find water together, as well as finding a way which allows for a return to the ship. But then we still won't be able to send the emergency signal. We should find out what that signal is that you're receiving. Agreed. Locate the signal and calculate the distance. Scan initiated. Signal detected. Calculating. Calculated distance, 9.4 kilometers. Possible deviation up to 21%. So, about 10 kilometers. Or about walking distance of 2 hours. In the summer, with shorts, with an ice cream. On a foreign planet with unknown dangers and terrain, wearing a spacesuit, though, might take a little bit longer. Including these factors, I calculate a walking time between 9 and 11 hours with a high probability of death. As long as we find something capable of sending a distress signal at the end, I even prefer some interesting trail over a yellow brick road. What? What is that? Cord. Do you see that? Record. Confirm. A pulsating light. Recording started. What was it? I could not detect any pattern and no repetition. It seemed to be completely random. And it came from the same direction as the signal. Okay, I've got to go there. Core, will the sun be setting anytime soon? In about three Earth hours. Compared to the Earth, days are slightly shorter here, however, so are the nights. I see. We'll spend the night on the ship and set out tomorrow. Information. There are about three to four days worth of sustenance readily available here for you, if you would like to wait for Mark. I don't know if Mark is lying around somewhere all messed up, or if he's looking for help, or if he's the one sending out that signal. Even if I've rationed my supplies, they'll be gone at some point. And if there's still no sign of Mark by then, I'm going to have to leave here. Then I'd have to brave the dangers of an unknown planet with hardly any supplies left. No, I think it's best I leave when I feel like it, and not wait until I can't put it off any longer. We're leaving tomorrow morning. Confirmed. swamp with spooky lights. Normally that would be something I should find scary or unpleasant, but right now I just feel happy. Plants mean life, water, and food. I shouldn't just drink the water or pick a fruit on the off chance it might be okay though. And Kor, please let me know if there's any dangerous creature approaching from behind a bush. I shall scan the number of teeth to assess the creature's danger level before it pounces on you. That's very kind of you. That light flashed somewhere over there. Might be some native civilization. We might find intelligent life. <laughs> How exciting! You cannot tell what it is yet. It is too far away and the path leading you there might be dangerous. Yet my sensors read that your heart rate is increasing from excitement. Stuff like this is why I'm here, Kor. Discovering things. Even if it is just natural resources. I just wish I could have explored without an emergency. I'm really excited to see the planet, but I won't be leaving today. 
I should spend the night in the TAC-92. Okay. I think we're well prepared. There's a signal, so there has to be someone here. People... or... creatures? There was a light. Or was it just... lightning, or something natural? There was a directional light that lasted 4.4 seconds. A bright light. I would calculate that the chances of it not being artificial lie at 9.14%. Pretty slim odds, then. What do you mean by directional? There was a precise vector, but it changed as it shone. Could it be a reflection of the sun? The amount of blue light is too high. The sun as a source can be ruled out. So it's of a technical origin. Might have been Mark, or maybe he saw it too, which means he'd probably be on his way there right now. I suppose. If he was ejected from the TAC-92, then he would probably be able to see the smoke and come here. However, if that is the case, he would now be dead at a possibility of 94.1%. Where would I be without your optimism? So, you think I should stay here? This place offers shelter, and you can gather resources from the wreckage. It is also the first place any rescue teams would check while searching for you. Leaving this place would be illogical. But what is logical is that I would starve here and that I'd never find out what happened to Mark. Maybe he needs help, and without him I can't send out an emergency signal. I'd just be wasting my precious time. As a weak biological life form, you will naturally lose energy and gradually be able to move shorter and shorter distances, which greatly lowers your chances at survival. <laughs> You're a real ray of sunshine, Kor. Furthermore, the light signal might vanish and then you would no longer be able to make out its origin. All the more reason not to stay here, Kor. Then I can only hope Mark is still alive and won't leave me hanging. I'd rather risk it and take my fate into my own hands. Understandable, considering you are an organic life form. However, in the event of an accident, you would be entirely helpless. You almost sound like Tony, that old worry wart. Tony? Anthony? My husband, Anthony Carter. According to my database, you are unmarried. Your database only knows about that Melissa Luna on the ID card. Database update. Tessa Carter is married to Anthony Carter. Yes, he also works for the Intergalactic Mining Corporation as a biochemist. I can see him right now, drinking hot chocolate together with our son, Finn. Just a few weeks journey away from here. Please add to your database that Finn is four years old. Wait, five? No, four. Finn is four years old. Anyway, if I want to see them again, I have to survive. Database updated. Excellent. <sighs> I have to take a break. I can't keep my eyes open. You keep watch while I sleep, and wake me if anything happens. Confirmed. You wanted to tell me something? Yes. Mr. Bishop, he offered me a promotion. Hey, that's amazing! Congratulations, you really deserve it. Thank you, Tony. You hesitate. Despite the improvement, you're worried you won't have any thrills in the new job, right? I understand. You went through a lot after the accident. Yes. I'm lucky to have survived that day. You must have been very afraid all alone on a foreign planet. I... well... yes. But I also felt excited. Free. It was a strange mix of emotions and... Wait. What about Mark? Have you found him? Yes, we found him. He is alive and well. Oh, what luck. <laughs> so, that night I dreamed about the day I was at the beach with Tony, where I told him about being promoted. I don't know what I meant by that. 
let's stick to what you experienced. Please continue telling me what you remember. What happened the following day when you left? Good morning, Tessa. Good morning, Cor. How was the night? No unusual incidents. My scanners detected that you had an uneasy sleep. Slightly creepy, but correct. It's not great sleeping in a spacesuit. <sighs> As if crashing wasn't bad enough for my poor bones. We should get going to find out more about the signal and the light. Then we'll see if there's a chance to escape. Or if I'll be turning into a fossil here. Would you like me to read you some motivational quotes from my database? Even the longest journey begins... For heaven's sake, don't. I've already got a headache. Maybe we can find something interesting out there. That makes me feel better. Has the signal changed at all? Negative. It is unchanged and still active at the same strength and same relative distance. I can't see the light anymore. Uh, oh well. Whatever it is, the signal might be useful. Maybe I can repurpose it. Can you fly ahead and scan the ground to tell me where I can walk? Confirmed. So far, so good. You made it look quite easy. Thanks. That wasn't my first climbing session. But as I thought, I won't be able to get back to the ship's wreckage. It would be logical to not waste time and instead look ahead, as long as the signal is active. Somehow I've got the feeling we're going to ask ourselves where ahead even is. I hope ahead doesn't mean through the undergrowth and straight into some animal's mouth. My sensors would register any animal with Tessa-sized mouths. How reassuring. This is a dense network of individual plant fibers that extend underground for many kilometers. They are all part of the same species and leave no room for others. The signal is coming from this direction. There's a swarm of insects here. They look like oversized mosquitoes, sucking on the plants and glowing. So they're the ones causing these strange lights in the swamp. Seems to be some form of bioluminescence. These are the small life forms that I registered. They're as big as rats. A large bubble that formed on the swamp water. A bit disgusting, really. There was nothing special on this side of the swamp. It all looked the same. And the path seems to be just back here. We have to use the signal as a guide. These remind me more of corals than of plants. They're even moving slightly, but apart from that, they seem uninteresting. Corals on Earth are more akin to animals than to plants. Tony would have been delighted to try and find out what exactly these things are. Wow, this plant is in bloom. Finally, a little bit of color on this hunk of rock. But the smell isn't exactly what I would call infectuating or appealing. Neither would I. Then again, I have no smell receptors. In any case, this smell is not meant to attract us. We are strangers to this world. 
Thanks for reminding me, Kor. I almost forgot. But, from a scientific standpoint, I am interested why this one is in bloom while the others are not. Not that the answer would help me out. An impressive flower. Long, strange fibers are hanging out of it. I'll cut them off as far up as possible, but I'll leave most of them. I'm sure the plant needs them to survive. I've already got some of them. I won't be getting any more. A swarm of insects happily feasting on a plant. They look like blown up mosquitoes. And... Incredible how dirty, brackish, green, lentic, stinking water can give life to all sorts of creatures. But we humans are disgusted by it. This disgust prevents you from drinking it and transporting all kinds of bacteria and parasites into your organism, Tessa. Thanks for the reminder. Unlike the others, these insects are glowing red. The water in this pond is very shallow and has a different color. It's red-brown instead of yellow-green. I can see something beneath it. Oh, and it reeks. Oh, that's a dead animal. Or, well, what remains of it. Looks like it's been dead for a few days. It's got feathers. Is that a... A toucan. What? No, that's impossible. It has to be some other animal that just looks very similar. The insects appear to be taking in the blood from the water through the plant. My scan was unable to detect any changes within the plant, however. The signal is coming from this direction. There was nothing special on this side of the swamp. It all looked the same. And the path seems to be just back here. We have to use the signal as a guide. more of corals than of plants. They're even moving slightly, but apart from that, they seem uninteresting. Corals on Earth are more akin to animals than to plants. Tony would have been delighted to try and find out what exactly these things are. Incredible how dirty, brackish, green, lentic, stinking water can give life to all sorts of creatures. But we humans are disgusted by it. This disgust prevents... Thanks. This just keeps getting better. Wouldn't it be nice if life was easy? Intergalactic Mining Corporation. No progress without obstacles. Yeah, yeah, I know the propaganda. D 
Do you know the slogan's origin? I may have mild amnesia core, but I know that I always deliberately disregarded that information. The IMC's legendary founder, Walter Knight, derived his worldview and ethics from the video games he so thoroughly enjoyed playing. If there are no obstacles or problems in your way, then you're going in the wrong direction, is what he always said. You should be on the lookout for obstacles. Hence, no progress without obstacles. <laughs> I thought some overpriced advertising company had come up with that slogan. But it's even worse. He came up with it while wasting his time on video games. Well, I guess he wanted to appear more down-to-earth, our Mr. Knight. And that's how people actually see him. Because they bombarded us with the slogan in every commercial. My market research data shows a correlation between the slogan's frequent repetition and the IMC's customer ratings. How nice for the IMC. Okay, obstacles. So that means we should be heading towards those mountains over there. They count as an obstacle, right? Correct. The signal is still about 4.1 kilometers away. And how are we going to get down there? Unfortunately, I have no data on how to overcome real-world obstacles. The roots here have grown to become a net-like mesh. A lake that this huge plant grew into. It almost extends right up to my cliff. Only about 20 or 30 meters deeper. A huge plant that broke through from above and grew into the lake. There are insects sucking on it, glowing. If it's growing upwards, it has to be somewhere on this plateau. That is to be assumed. There are many here, but it is not clear which one it is. I once spent a week on a planet with a similar view. Back then, I planned every expedition in a way that I could enjoy that view as much as possible. Now, I'd almost be happy to see the boring interior of a functioning spaceship instead. And without any surprises. But only almost. A huge crack in the rock wall. Looks like the plant broke through from above. If we find that rift, we might be able to climb down on the plant. Or we find the plant itself. I'm sure I've already been close to this ledge. It's part of this plateau I'm on after all. But even if I was right above it, it's still too much of a descent. The signal came from this direction. The source must be somewhere on the lower plain behind these mountains. nothing special on this side of the swamp. It all looked the same. And the paths, but we all... There was nothing, but we all... is coming from this direction. I 
lost a lot of blood afterwards, which then ran down into the water. There was nothing special on this side of the swamp, but we also need some... nothing special on this side of the swamp. It all looked the same. And, but we also need... No, I can't get back up there to the... There has to be something in this labyrinth of plants that can help me out. small crater filled with blue tinged slightly strange looking water is there something glinting at the bottom of the crater confirmed there is an object consisting of various metals and salts in the middle of the crater that is shimmering blue a plant growing beyond the crater's edge it's gonna be like a bridge soon, but it's too slippery to walk on even though it's got small indentations. A visual analysis shows that your bridge comparison is mainly unjustified. I would register it thus, mossy, slippery, unclimbable, leafy plant. And, likes it moist and shady. Fertilize once a month. This plant seems to be dead and dried up, even though there's water in this crater. Looks like all the other plants had the same fate. And there aren't any insects here either. My sensors indicate that the roots of these plants have been damaged and the capillary vessels have been blocked by salt residue. The plant died of thirst. Put the net in the water? I won't reach it from here. Core, couldn't you try? I am a levitating, high-tech sphere, capable of solving the most complicated calculations in fractions of a second, and you want me to act like a common cargo robot? You could have just said no. Limbs are overrated. Um, my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. And I will have my vengeance? But, apart from vengeance, this won't help me. I can't attach it to the pole. That might be useful. Push them in a bit, but they're still wiggling. Right, now they're pretty stable. Careful. Do you think this is a good idea? 
Does taking this risk bring you closer to your goal? Chill out, Core. Unusual situations require unusual measures, and what I'm going to find in this crater is going to be quite unusual. According to my calculations, the outcome of climbing one of these plants is lethal in 9.4% of all cases. Statistics are no joke. I hurled my butt through space inside of a hunk of metal with controlled ionic detonations. You really think I'm scared of a bit of free climbing? This plant is sturdy, and all that's beneath it is a puddle. And I have to climb it anyways to find a way out of this swamp, because otherwise we'd die. Sometimes you have to live dangerously, Core, or you might never live at all. Don't you have a curiosity algorithm? Or some humor routines? If we're really going to starve, dry up, or get eaten by aliens, I want to at least be able to laugh. You want me to be funny? Yes, exactly. Oh. We'll practice. Okay then. Say something funny. Calculating. I'm waiting. Joke confirmed. What did the sun say to the earth? No, 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 I don't want you to tell me a joke. Make fun of our situation. About the swamp, our location, about me, about yourself, anything. I mean, you can tell me about dangers if you want, but just do it more... interestingly. More excitingly. Maybe even sarcastically. I understand. So, should you fall from the plant, please scream as loudly as possible so Mark Bennett can find us. Because I can't catch you or perform first aid. Hmm. Good attempt at sarcasm, Core. Could have been worse. Let's see. All I have to do is not drop it. Pretty heavy, but there it is. The blue shimmering meteorite from the crater. It's probably what caused the water to be blue. Highly likely, it is full of blue salt crystals that slowly dissolved in the water. I hope all the trouble I went through with the meteorite was worth it. I once spent a week on a planet with a similar view. Back then, I planned every expedition in a way that I could enjoy that view as much as possible. Now, I'd almost be happy to see the boring interior of a functioning spaceship instead, and without any surprises. But only almost. What are you trying to do? Unpleasant, but... Unavoidable! Physical exertion to relieve stress? That should have been worth it. Take a look. Yes! The lake is turning blue! like it's working. The mosquitoes turned blue for a second, but they flew away. 
They don't seem to like the plant's juice anymore after we tampered with it. Humankind is famous for this behavior. A function ecosystem that humanity does not fully comprehend is altered and permanently damaged, all out of pure self-interest. All the indigenous fauna can do is flee. If I can escape this planet by giving the indigenous fauna a bellyache, then I'll gladly be the poster child for my species' wrongdoings. I have seen worse specimens of your species. coming out at the same places. I think I've seen everything there is to see in this area. Confirmed. We must concentrate on what we have at hand. No, I can't get back up there to the wreck. There was nothing special on this side of the swamp at all, but we also need some coming from this direct There was nothing special on this side of the swamp, but we also need... There was nothing special on this side of the swamp, but we also need...
Yes! Oily fibers on a stick. Yes, that worked. Now all we need is a dark cave full of pressure plates that make arrows shoot out of the wall. What a strange thing to wish for. This stuff smells and smokes a lot. You won't reach these insects, Tessa. They don't respond to me. Maybe they see me as one of their own. I wonder if burning them would do anything. What purpose would that have? They might not burn at all. That would be a waste. If they do burn, however, you might be faced with a bigger problem. Even if we disregard the potentially toxic fumes. It was just an idea. I think I was a bit of a pyromaniac as a kid. nothing special on this side of the but we also need some kind of reference point that we can follow the signal will only take us to the edge no i can't get back up there to the wreck how dirty brackish grit but we human this disgust thanks for there was nothing special on this side of the swamp it all looked the same. And, but we also need... No, I can't get back up there to the wreck. Damn it! I keep coming out at the same places. I think I've seen everything there is to see in this area. Confirmed. We must come. from this direction. The signal comes from this direction, but you will not be able to overcome the water. There's bound to be a way around it. A swarm of insects. Hmm. Biological logic dictates that they will. You're right. Anyway, they might be able to show us the way. Right now, they seem to be enjoying their food in peace. Ah! Yes, I can shoo them away with that. Next time, however, a little more purposefully. Okay, this time more deliberate. But in which direction?
A swarm of ins- hmm. Biological- yeah. Right now they seem to- Affirmative. Then that must mean that this is a limb of the plant that goes down the edge towards the bottom. Does that make sense? Affirmative. Any other plant absorbing water that has been colored by this or any other meteorite should have withered by now. Excellent. Let's follow it. Here's the tear. That should be... Interesting. You could just jump. There's a 91% chance of you slipping and falling anyway. I'd rather be deceived by your statistic. have to do is stick to the signal's direction. The torch is burned out anyway. I'll just get lost out here without a proper idea of where to go. Just get lost out here without a The signal is coming from this direction. The source is about 2.9 kilometers away and has not moved. I'll just get lost out here. Okay, Core, let's go. You can nap later. We can manage the rest, too. Core? Are you okay? The signal strength is decreasing rapidly. I will attempt to increase reception capacities to secure more precise coordinates. It's decreasing? Then collect as much data as you can. Completed. Good. Then we should hurry. Okay, Core. It's getting easier. How far are we... Unbelievable. An outpost of the IMC. Number 1124. Looks deserted. Is this where the signal came from? It is highly likely that the signal was transmitted from here until it stopped abruptly a few minutes ago, probably from inside the facility. That's... <laughs> that's great. My sensors indicate a high irony content in your words. <laughs> You're right. I, I mean, this is just all so strange. Strange? Should you not be feeling relieved that we found this place? I am, but we should be careful. We don't know what's waiting for us. Can you see a way inside? 
There's a large gate there, Tessa. Thanks for the subtle hint. I doubt there'll be a red carpet reception for me if I ring the doorbell, but it's worth a try. Lots of pieces of scrap that are caught up on each other, as if they were one solid piece. This pole is pretty beat up and loose. It's only hanging onto a single bolt that's sticking out. It's a bit looser than before, and the bolt is sticking out even further. It's a bit looser than before, and the bolt is sticking out even further. Force it is then. You might still have needed that one. I know. It might have helped to break into an outpost. Yeah, I get it. But now we've got this post here. A post? Yes, a post. Useful in many of life's sticky situations. Searching database. No, no use case found, other than sticking it into the ground. As a post. I've got the hands and I'm the one who has to improvise. You are the person who lashes out with a hammer. Just keep reading your database, quietly. I think not. One of us should watch where we are going. <laughs> okay, I admit it. Your sense of direction is better than mine. It's not unusual for nature to reclaim abandoned buildings. The plants have grown right into these rooms. If there was someone living here, they'd have taken care of them. Unless that person had more important things to deal with. There's always something better to do. the big door. You should knock. It looks like you're trying to knock. Would you like help? Huh. Looks pretty overgrown and abandoned, but the station was still able to send a signal. Strange. Hello? No answer. But maybe it's for the best. 
After all, I don't know what might have answered. We can't open it. Climbing up won't work either. And if I fell and broke something, that would just complicate things. What does the way around this look like, Kor? Good, but you would have to walk 1.9 kilometers to circumvent the plateau, maybe more. And statistics don't lie, yeah, yeah. But I guess we'd have the same problem there, too. It's a no-win situation. The floor covering is made from the same material as the rest of the station. It seems to have a hole in it here. Perhaps it was originally inside a rock that is no longer where it used to be. There might be a way inside below these materials. There has to be some way of moving this junk so we can get into the hole. There's a strap tied around it. Maybe that's what's keeping everything in place. Yes, I can see a hole through the gaps in the metal. We have to move this scrap out of the way somehow so we can get down there. As a great philosopher once said, consider wherever you go, that's where you will be. In this case, he'd be gone, along with anything else I threw in this hole. I can insert the pole, but can't push it any more to the left because it's touching the rock. can get it off with this. Damn, these metal pieces are too caught up on each other. I'll put it under here. Let's see, maybe it will roll on this cylinder. There's a drop off a few meters here, and then we're in, Kor. Almost. A tie down strap. Perfect for joining things together, or giving large, unwieldy things a point of connection. It might fit through the lug. Yes! Excellent! Now around here and over here, and tie it together. That should do it. We can wedge this part in, and the strap is secure. Yeah, that works. up in the morning. This is almost exactly what I wished for. I mean, it looks just like I feared it would, but whatever. I agree. As long as we can find a water supply, you will be able to survive here for a while. We might find one inside the station. 
You said the signal came from in there, right? Correct. This door is the only way inside. It is made of titanium and is not very thick, but you will probably not be able to open it manually due to its weight. You need electricity for its gear mechanism. We shall see. But this door isn't as much of a problem as the mother of all doors up there is. My psychological subroutines find this comparison to be very odd. Do you always conflate size and power? What was your childhood like? Just turn off these routines. I've seen computers struggling that were less dusty. It seems to be damaged only on the outside. Everything appears to be fine on the inside. You sound like a psychiatrist. These are our samples that were mined here. There are crystals inside one of them. These stone and metal samples are so heavy, I can't move them an inch. They're also rock hard and solid, I can't break anything off. There's a strange attachment lying around here. I'll take it with me. Some bars that might lead us to the station's interior. No, these bars are part of a ring-shaped air exhaust system. The outlet is somewhere outside of the station. With this fusion generator, the room can maintain its own energy circuit. A security system, in case any human or other biological life form has an emergency in the drilling shaft. Well, we've already got our emergency. Court, is it really safe? Of course, it is a small version of a standard fusion generator, roughly the size of an average washing machine. Okay, then let's put this fusion in spin cycle. Good boy. Brainless machines. It's still working. I never thought I'd be happy to hear the ear-splitting noise made by a machine like this. There were some magnetic metal parts in the hole. What? Come on, open up! You've got power, what else do you want? Oh, wait a moment. I see. The emergency power supply only powers the machines and lights in this room. All doors appear to be locked by an alarm protocol that belongs to the station's main system. So what else can I do? Use a crowbar? If I put it in the cavities between the struts, it might stay.
Yeah, looks good. I'd better put on the helmet. If this does not work, we will not be able to remove it again. Are you sure this is a good idea? It's going to work. Trust me, Cor. Do you have any final objections, hints, or prayers you want to share? No. My calculations indicate a relatively high chance of success. I will not disclose the exact number so as not to worry you. If this fails, however, it could ruin the entire mechanism and jam it forever. And you think that would not worry me? Okay. Unpleasant, but unavoidable. Let's go. Beauty. The high probability was correct. Statistics don't lie. Neither do physics. Yes, away inside. Finally. What is that? M Mark? Go! I am not registering any signs of life. I... I saw something. A, a shadow, the silhouette of a human. He ran away. I assume my sensors are somewhat more precise than your eyes. So you're saying I'm imagining things? <sighs> well, the situation is getting to me, so I guess I can't rule it out. Stay positive, Tessa. We did it. We're in. That's something, at least. There's nothing going on here in the station. Where did the signal come from, Kor? From this direction. Enhancing location. There is a light source up in the command center. You're right. Let's go. Maybe I was right after all. Hello? Nothing. No light. No person. Not even energy by the looks of it. Damn it! Your heart rate is too high, Tessa. Keep my heart rate out of it. I'm allowed to get upset about all this crap. What is this all about? 
We both saw the light core. It was up here, no doubt. And now I'm here and there's nothing, no power, no source of light, nothing. What the hell is going on here? And end the signal. What could have been sending it, Kor? This is definitely the source, but I cannot find any electricity in the vicinity, just the generator we started. What was it then? Eleven hedgehogs and a hamster wheel? An average-sized toucan with a megaphone? Both of these theories are probably incorrect. <sighs> Sorry for getting so riled up, Kor. I mean... It's not your fault. So you've lost the signal and there's no power here. Nor are there any signs of life from anyone. Or anything. Are you able to tell us more about the outpost now? Yes, this is an independent drilling and research station. Judging by the condition of its building materials, it was probably built 20 to 40 Earth years ago. I could find all details in the database. But I have a theory now what kind of planet we are on and where it might be located. Well, let's hear it. Visualization initialized. I have the slightly disconcerting suspicion that the station is not close to any inhabited planets. These are almost always incorporated into designated trade routes. They have an alternating crew of more than 400 people, as this allows for the transportation of large amounts of necessary goods. The station we currently find ourselves in, however, is autonomous and small, and its regular crew could not have encompassed more than 40 people. I assume that it was part of a research program which erected stations such as this one at the edge of the known parts of the galaxy. Ships are sent to these stations in regular intervals of more than a year, as long as they are in service. In the meantime, the stations function autonomously. At some point, they are abandoned, once the borders of explored territory shift. But there must have been some kind of communications channel for emergencies. Indeed, but direct interstellar communication is too slow. It could take months for a signal to reach another planet. These stations help themselves, they have no choice. However, IMC ships regularly fly through these areas to pick up any signals. If necessary, they can help or relay information to headquarters. There might also be trading or exploration ships from other companies that could receive signals from here, long before they reach any inhabited planets. So that means, if we transmit a distress signal, it's more like a smoke signal on a lost island at sea. Not like calling emergency services via landline that will be there tomorrow. Correct. So, reaching someone will take time, but it's not impossible. As soon as the station has enough power, it will keep us alive and can continuously emit signals to the transport routes so someone can pick us up. Correct. Then let's do it. Good. The power supply comes from an incineration plant in the station's west wing. We received a signal from here, so the communication systems seem to be intact. It's nice how both of us are just ignoring the fact that the signal shouldn't have existed, just like the light. But, okay, we should just be glad that we noticed it and we're here now. Now we just need power. It all looks so beautiful from up here, as if the outpost has just become one with nature. Hmm, that's strange. What do you mean? The cables. The station is overgrown, but that doesn't tear out cables. This console won't help us without power.
They obviously never finished the work on this cable shaft. There's a hollow, sturdy metal cylinder here full of holes. Some kind of cable duct, I suppose. This is the communications console with which signals can be sent to other planets or through space. That's our way out of here. As long as we can get it powered up. Correct. Once the incinerator is providing energy, we will have access to the database where we should be able to find flight paths close to this planet. Then, a signal will only be a few button pushes away. Good. Well, better than nothing anyway. Let's keep working on the incinerator then. Once we've got to it, that is. This console won't help us with... It says medical ward on the door. It's locked and I can't see any way of moving it or reaching the mechanism. A metal bar was stuck in the door to keep it open. If I calculated this station's procedures and automatic systems correctly, then there are various, specific, manual steps executed by humans necessary to achieve this outcome. Usually, the security system would open this door. There must have been an emergency lockdown while someone was holding this bar in place, analogous to the locked door by the drilling room. Compared to the control room, this place is full of random assortments of outdated technology. Apart from this robot arm, nothing really belongs here, I think. In self-sustaining facilities, it is not unusual to adjust the equipment according to the given conditions, as long as the people in charge know what they are doing, or they have a core. I can imagine. A workbench, full of trash and signs of wear and tear. That's what every DIY enthusiast dreams of. The only thing left inside here are a cable, a kind of nozzle, and a lot of screws. This console won't help. A coffee machine. What a surprise. Cord, that looks like a 3D printer. Correct. This machine can turn virtual models into reality by applying liquid synthetic materials and metals layer by layer and then hardening them. How do you know that? I remember I did some research into this topic. My long-term memory seems to be working at least. But it needs power. The robot can be moved using these wheels, but only down here, even though it should be able to stretch upwards. That is probably only for maintenance purposes and to be able to get it out of the way if it cannot move on its own anymore. I don't think it'll be useful to me anywhere, so I'll just move it back. A robot arm that seems to be able to move around along these rails. But what does it do? There are boxes stored in the ceiling. This robot arm is the only way of reaching these and getting them down.
I don't think it'll be useful to me anymore. Oh, lots of cogs. This has to be the robot's mechanism. Lots of cogs in varying sizes and shapes. A gas burner with two tubes, both of which aren't connected to anything. There are some elements and materials written down here. I'm sure this display is used to control the mechanism next to it. The ceiling is divided into strange sections, but I can't see any lamps. These are special storage containers that are assigned to employees and can be retrieved from the ceiling with the help of the robot. The workers in this room probably did not care about light, but there are lamps on the walls in the upper areas. Nothing helpful. The cables. It won't move. Ugh. But it's open just a crack. Looks like someone tried to keep it open with a metal plate. But it didn't work like it did with the other door there. We are also going to need power here, Tessa. Yeah, you're right, but I can't find any mechanical way of opening them either. It's all solid as rock. This is the incinerator plant that powers everything, right? Correct. Also, the vehicle hangar. According to my data, the doors should have an emergency mechanism with which you can manually open them. We only need to find the access point. I can't move it. It's held on by some screws. A bit rusty, but it's working. Yes, that looks like a manual mechanism. This does not conform to regular standards. There is a cog missing. There's a cog missing here. The mechanism would work again if there was a cog here that was the same size as the one next to it. If we're going to be looking for one like this, we should probably take it with us. It's screwed in place. I need another gear like this one.
that might be useful. These barrels have been here for ages. I can't read what's inside them, they're too rusty. It should not be anything dangerous, otherwise these plants would not be growing here so abundantly. That is logical. I hope. The drilling room is connected to the station's main power supply. Kor, your analysis was correct. Nature is reclaiming this place. The plants are growing into the station from outside. Cogs and gears of varying sizes and kinds. The mechanism seems to be similar to the one by the door to the incinerator plant. It extends across the whole floor and contains many more movable parts. I need a similar cog to find one here that would fit the other mechanism. None of these cogs are the right size. Core, please analyze the rest of the mechanism and tell me if you can find a cog that's similar to this one. Yes, the mechanism was altered in one place and a cog of the same type was used. Great, save the information. We have to be able to move it over here somehow. Well, it's part of the robot mechanism. Core, please show me the cogs and highlight the ones we're looking for in green. There has to be some way of getting the ones we need to the maintenance hatch.
did it! The cog is sitting in the maintenance area, and I can reach it. That's the cog I need. But I can't get it out with my bare hands. All the gears are in. To use the mechanism, all I have to do is crank the lower cog with some kind of tool. Perfect fit. Excellent! Everything fits together and the attachment fits onto the cog. Now I can turn it and operate the mechanism. I have the tools, and the mechanism is repaired. Let's give it a try. robot in the storage room, so I'll take the cog with me again. Wow. This facility is huge. Is this the garbage incineration? Correct. Garbage, rubble, and any flammable materials are burned here. The resulting heat is used to generate power. Burning stuff for electricity? That's a bit anti-Delivian. At that time, this crude technology ensured independence from energy cells that were not known to work on this planet. A certain amount of energy is always stored to ensure the facility can power up. So we just push a button, the power turns on, and we can use the communications console? Not correct. Firstly, we need to activate the remaining energy via the console. Then we can use the machine and transport materials to the furnace to activate it. Once the facility has reached its full capacity, all systems will be active and we can continue. see myself roaring across the planet in this. Finding interesting places, strange plants, and breathtaking monuments. You should focus your attention on repairing the energy supply and transmitting the emergency signal. <sighs> You're no fun. But once I'm finished, that's how I'll kill the time. It's not holding anything in place, so I can take it with me.
And this could really sustain the facility for an extended amount of time? The efficiency coefficient is very high. Also, the floor can be lowered, depending on available materials. With just half a ton of materials, we will have enough energy for at least one Earth week, if we shut down some systems even longer. Well, at least it fits. With just a bit of force. Yes, my fingers can fit through now. <sighs> Bin sesame! The research lab. I bet Tony would have felt right at home here. Lots of bottles with chemical inscriptions. They're all empty. The glass flask. What would chemistry be without it? Oh, a laser generator that normally belongs to a cutting device. Pretty dangerous to just leave lying around here. There are also some notes and a drawing. The laser cutter we used in our last mission could not be salvaged. Only the generator itself as well as the power cell are still functional. You're right. You need some form of defense. I wish I could give you more, but I don't have time. Here are some instructions on how I would do it. Be extremely careful. Defense against what? I'll put these notes aside. They're on some sort of scale. I might need that. And I'll take the rest with me. Attention, warning, hydrochloric acid. There is a highly complicated mechanism built in which ensures only qualified personnel actually operate it. This will not be easy. I will scan my databases for any instructions. Result. Push both plastic parts aside and then pull the lever. I would never have guessed that. Of course not. That's a child safety lock. And you're not a child. Ugh, forget it. I need some kind of container to transport this stuff. These plants are dying, but they're not quite dead yet. On planets like this one, they often use plants that can survive even in the harshest of conditions. Their fruits are cultivated in such a way that they can produce new crops even after a long time has passed. I see. Yes, these yellow fruits are still fresh. I'll take one with me. It might come in handy. This baby won't work without power. A small laboratory cabinet. A precision scale discreetly integrated into the table. Oh, no. 
The laser cutter we used in our last mission could not be salvaged. Only the generator itself as well as the power cell are still functional. You're right. You need some form of defense. I wish I could give you more, but I don't have time. Here are some instructions on how I would do it. Be extremely careful. <sighs> I can't stop thinking about you need some form of defense. This is the communications cons- Yes, but the go- Hmm. That's strange. What do you mean? The cables. It all looks so beautiful from up here, as if the outpost has just become one with nature. It's hanging onto a few thin metal plates that are connected to the shaft. I can probably detach it with these. Maybe I can get it out like this. The acid isn't affecting it, just the rock around it. I wonder if it might work now. Yes! The rock is crumbling and the crystal is coming out slowly. There it is. <laughs> Three cheers for chemistry.
found this with the laser generator. Some sort of sketch or manual on how to turn this generator into a laser cutter with the right equipment. There is a saying for this, Tessa, all things considered. Careful with that construction. I told you, physics don't lie. Works better than expected. The stuff is coming off the shovel nicely. Oh no, it's vibrating a lot. Hold on tight. Done. What's the turn off? Over here. Damn. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> if Mark had seen that, he'd be lecturing me right now. I would gladly switch into lecture mode. Stop yabbing. It worked. That's what matters. I should be able to move it with the console now. Physics don't lie. You are correct. Cut. This fruit is so soft, it's more like mashing it. Oh, I pierced a hole in it, and now there's an oily liquid coming out of it. What are you doing? I'm oiling the tracks so the cart can move more easily. Or, well, I hope so, anyway. The lubricant seeps between the components, thus lowering the friction coefficients, decreasing the necessary force. I am impressed. <laughs> if 8th grade physics is enough to impress you, then I've got a lot more to offer. Now all we need is the cart itself. This one is full of plants and fruit. Oh, a source of food. How did they survive this long? 
This appears to be a clever, self-sustaining ecosystem. There is probably an outside connection here somewhere. Is there any way we can get to those plants? Maybe we can break one of the windows. If the incubator has power and the system is undamaged, you can retrieve the fruits again and again while maintaining the balance. If you break the glass, you will be able to harvest the fruit, but the plants will not survive for much longer afterwards. Can't we just break it? Think about the consequences, Tessa. This incubator and the plants within it could sustain you for a long time, but to do that, the system must remain intact. It can be opened via the display. As soon as we have power. A gas burner with two tubes, both of which aren't connected to anything. I'll take the shorter tube with me. I can already see myself roaring across the planet in this. Finding interesting places, strange plants, and breathtaking monuments. You should focus your attention on repairing the energy supply and transmitting the emergency signal. <sighs> You're no fun. But once I'm finished, that's how I'll kill the time. I'll just pour away the contents. I know where to look if I want more. Yes, now I can reach it. Maintenance completed, right? Correct.
There's no point in starting up the incinerator when there's nothing here to incinerate, right? Correct. For the crane is free again, so... I shouldn't do that here. have to go a few more times. Simple machines can be useful, too. How nice of you to say. That should be enough. All you need to do is turn it on. All precautions taken. Well then. Hold on to your butts. I... well, I don't. It's just a saying. Yes, that sounds good. Startup sequence initialized. Capacity at 1%. 1%? It will take a while for the facility to start. It has been dormant for quite a while. <sighs> I see. We're just gonna have to live with that. Is there anything I can do to help? You could press the start button repeatedly and more vigorously while swearing. That would not change anything, but it appears to be one of your rituals. Thanks, I'll pass. I'm tired enough as it is. It's been a long day. I should lie down. Where's the best place in the station to sleep? Here. Here? Where it's really loud and full of trash? I understand that an organic life form such as yourself might have a problem with that. In that case, I recommend the drilling room. Okay. Let's go there then. Good. So we can transmit a distress signal tomorrow, which will be picked up by all surrounding flight paths. Then all we need is for a ship to actually fly along one of those routes and notice it. Just... Correct. The food and water supplies are secured? The incubators are intact. Many of the plants are unharmed and have been sustaining humans for many years. It looks quite promising. <sighs> it does. If you dismiss all the absurd things we've encountered here and throughout our journey. It doesn't seem to make sense that we received a signal, that's true. We will be able to verify if something was transmitted from here in the outpost's protocols as soon as it is online. I registered it from within the facility. That does not mean that it came from the station's communications center. And then there's that shadow I saw. Probably an illusion. My sensors are set to constantly be on the lookout for signs of life. There were none. What if it was Mark? What if something happened to him? It can't have been him. Apart from my sensors not picking him up, he would have had to overtake us on our way through the swamp, or he would have landed here without a radio device by pure chance. Maybe this is all more... complex. I've been exploring strange planets for years, but I've never been on my own. Left to my own devices with no team. The longest I've been alone were a few expeditions in a rover. And even then I always had radio contact. I often thought about what it would be like to be on an expedition into the unknown, alone, and free. Making mistakes, encountering problems, finding solutions, 
proving to nobody but myself what I can do. Just like now? Just like now. I don't know why, but... To be honest, despite the danger, I'm enjoying the challenge. We revived a desert outpost. That's incredible. Maybe it's my anxiety playing tricks on me. My guilty conscience because I didn't look for Mark more thoroughly. All because I wanted to explore. Could I have done more? It would have made sense for me to have those hallucinations. If there wasn't concrete evidence to the contrary. We both saw the light. Twice. And received a signal that guided me here to a place that might just save my life. How probable is it even for us to find something like this? Please make your question more specific. Well, there's nothing in Mark's protocol about what kind of mission we're on, only that we set off from another moon later than anticipated and that we both have gaps in our memory. Then we crashed on a planet abandoned by the company. What was our goal? Maybe this place. Maybe. It's possible we weren't supposed to explore an unknown planet, but we were supposed to find something else on our mission here? Some kind of secret. We have to find out what happened to this place, Core. Why it was abandoned. We will probably have enough time to do that while the signal is being transmitted. Right. Well, then you keep watch again. I'll go and rest up. Will do. Automatic firing systems activated. Excuse me? I was joking. If I notice anything sneaking around here, I will wake you up with loud beeping noises. I have elaborate waking subroutines and 12 different ringtones. You're truly a marvel of technology, Core. <laughs> Good night. You hesitate. Despite the improvement, you're worried you won't have any thrills in the new job, right? Yes, I guess. I know what I'm good at, but this new position would mean more money, more security. There's regular paychecks, more time at home, more time with you, and... Regularity, security, those aren't really things you care about. At least, you didn't until now. You know I support you. You should do whatever makes you happy. Don't do anything just for the money. We'll pull through anything, one way or another. Both of us. Together. You noticed something. What do you mean? You were in a hopeless situation. Without help. Without any prospect of being saved. But you never lost your optimism. You even found the time for snappy remarks. <laughs> that's just who I am. Maybe that's your way of working through the things that happened? Maybe. And it was a bit like a wish come true. The wish to explore foreign worlds. I do that a lot. But not under these extreme circumstances. You're right. <laughs> Some expeditions were so boring I didn't even know what to write in my report. I hated it when that happened. You don't like desk work? I do. I enjoy writing my reports, but... Something needs to have happened. I need to have experienced something. Otherwise I get bored. I see. Can you remember what happened the following day? Well, there was a very strange encounter. Good morning, Tessa. My sensors registered regular REM phases in your sleep. How are you feeling? 
Mm. Good morning, Kor. I feel much better, even though I'm still stranded on a foreign planet. The generator deactivated itself, but there's power for the lights. So the incinerator is running? Correct. We are at 94% capacity. That suffices to power all systems. Excellent. Let's get to the control room then, so we can start the distress signal before we explore any further. Communications console! There's somebody here. Your sensors must be going crazy. That bar didn't just fall from the ceiling on its own. I cannot rule out the possibility of a coincidence. However, I cannot register any material fatigue and my sensors detect physical interference. But I also cannot register any signs of life. That was our last hope of being saved. You should be hopeful as long as your basic biological functions are still active. Blood circulation, breathing, metabolic system. The lower levels of your Maslow's pyramid of needs are satisfied. Yeah. Well, somewhere in the middle of that pyramid is a level that says I don't want to be stabbed in the back. Come on, show yourself. What was that? Quickly, Cork. We have to get him. Wait. see it right before my eyes. The name tag on the attacker's suit. M. Luna. The same name as the one on the card. Is that why the figure attacked me? Strange. I've still got it. What does this mean? I wish I understood. The door won't open. I have to get out of here and make sure the attacker won't damage anything else. If the plants get destroyed, I'll starve miserably. At least the station has power again. And where's the tin can? Come on, power up! 
Don't you dare leave me here alone. I'm sorry I called you a tin can. A few of his cables are hanging out and I can see a hole in the hull. But his memory module seems to be undamaged. That's Anthony, I'm sure. And that? That is Finn. But he's so old. He looks like he's seven or eight. I... but he was younger than that. How did it get here? Were they here? Was I here? Calm. Stay calm. I can't remember him being that old. Does that mean I haven't seen him for that long? And wait a minute. If they were here, were they the expedition's goal? Or maybe it wasn't an expedition, but a search. Core. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Stay calm, Tessa. Maybe Anthony was stationed here at some point and I just forgot. I've never missed the two of them more. I hope I can find something in here to repair Kor, or leave the medical ward. No progress without obstacles. small key here and oh I don't have to repair core not the hardware anyway there's another one here I think that might even be a newer model Anything. Systems rebooting. Accessing database. My last saved entry is a sequence of special characters as if my swear protection algorithm optimized the entry. And why are all of my settings changed? I went after that figure, but then we were attacked. My memory's hazy, but there's one thing I saw. This person was wearing a name tag. It said M. Luna. That's the name from the ID card that I found in the suit. So maybe it was hers, but that was on our ship. Only you and Mark were on that ship. Yeah, strange. But that wasn't Mark. This person was smaller and daintier. He might have been able to squeeze into a suit like that, but... Well, I don't know. I couldn't tell. Whoever it was, the figure was able to take you out. Right. And gave me an injection in the neck. That's all I remember. And before that, she got you. I had to put your memory module into a different core model. Ah, so that's why all the settings are different. One moment, please. So, this is new. Over here. And that here. Who would do that? Strange widget, be gone. Start up menu to the bottom left, where it should be. Decline, decline, no, I do not want a newsletter. Classic mode, skip tutorial. A dark mode, that's unnecessary, maybe later. And another entirely new function, interesting. And what kind? Hollow records, 
This enables me to depict holographic recordings. If I am not mistaken, this station is equipped with hologram recorders. It looks like recordings are saved for every single room. That would mean we can see what happened here, right? Partially, yes. My access to the station's databases is limited and a lot of the data has been corrupted. Better than nothing. Maybe we can find some answers. I would be particularly interested in one answer. Why I found a family photograph with Anthony and Finn on it here. And why is Finn so much older than I remember? I cannot trace back this photograph's origins, but I agree, we cannot determine how a private item of yours got here. One possible explanation is that one of you has been here before. Not that I can remember. It's very strange. Capsules is broken. Could you get a new one? Can do. Blacklight, correct? Yes, obviously. Sure. We've got lots of those in storage. Damn, the door's blocked again. It keeps happening during those test alarms. Did you finally report the issue? Not yet. We've got more important things to report. You can fix it. Go to the console and into settings. There you can activate sleep mode and random mode. Then just press reset settings, then deactivate sleep mode and random mode again, and then press open door. It's pretty easy. That's what you call easy? Hmm. This is a mixer for various substances. It won't help me right now. A robot arm to extract blood and make injections. I've seen one of these before somewhere. Please be careful. A robot that is equipped with a syringe, but without any empathy subroutines, is something you should be wary of. Test tubes, instruments, pipettes. Nothing I could use to get out of here. In it are a lot of light capsules for blacklight. But they're all different sizes. Even if I needed them, I'd have no idea what sockets they'd fit into. Another light capsule to compare might be helpful. According to the label, it contains methyl hydrogen, so methane. A gas whose combustion produces water and carbon dioxide. This must be the console for the door. What was that again? update. You are up to date. Unexpected error. Door uses today. Calories burned. Zero. see how I can change that. Maybe I can open it via the console? 
This must be the console for the door. What was that again? That will not work, Tessa. A programming error like that would have been reported and examined. Humans really are amazing creatures. You can learn all there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet after many years, they can still surprise you with their stupidity. Yep, why repair it when there's a way around that hardly anyone knows? What could possibly go wrong? An injection gun for the subcutaneous injection of liquids. Just say syringe next time. Huh. With this, the person must have given me the injection and then lost it on the run. Can it be useful for us? If there are any remnants of the liquid inside it, I could analyze it. Hmm. Yes, there's a bit left in here. Get going, Corey. Beginning analysis. Analysis complete. Comparing with available data. The composition is similar to a poison, which is known to affect people's memories over long periods of time. There are documented cases where memories did not return for several years, but it was made synthetically. Memory loss. So someone wants me to forget something? I guess this isn't the first time I got a dose of that stuff. Do you remember a previous injection? No. But, hey, maybe that's why I forgot them. And I have all these gaps in my memory. And Mark, too, according to his log. What if it has something to do with me forgetting this place and my family? I cannot refute your argument, but I cannot confirm anything, either. You should remember these questions so you can get proper answers. That's easier said than done when you've been injected with a potion of forgetfulness. Is there any way of neutralizing this poison? An antidote? Yes, it should be possible to synthesize an antidote. What do we need? A sample of your blood. Ascorbic acid, as pure as possible. Adrenaline to stabilize your heart rhythm. Adrenaline. Great. And ascorbic acid. So, vitamin C? Colloquially known as vitamin C, yes. The solution itself must then be made by a sequencer or similar mixing device, so we can be sure to get the correct dosage. Okay, so I have to draw some blood and find some vitamin C and adrenaline. Piece of cake on a foreign planet with imminent memory loss. Just a little sting. Medical unit states, blood sample of unregistered patient successfully extracted. Analysis, blood levels critical. Medical assistance required. 
Calculating DNA sequence. This contains waterproof plasters and bandages. The incubators are working, and my food supply is safe. And a laboratory is much, much more fun when it's got power. I'm sure we'll find something here, Core. This console's display is intact, and controls the incubator. Yes, you can open it from here. I would only recommend doing that if you want to retrieve something. The fruits inside there might help with my antidote. We have to risk it. To open the incubator, the values must be adjusted according to the environment. You can see them here, in this green area. Unfortunately, this system seems to have been damaged, too. Then we'll just adjust them manually. Fruits will help me. There are more fruits in here. Some of them aren't ripe yet. As suspected, the system will provide you with enough sustenance. Energy, yes. Light, no. <laughs> Looks like the workplace of every programmer ever, including the coffee machine. How decadent. Now that's what I call a clean and disinfected cup. teacup, or coffee if you prefer. Pretty messy, but it works.
This is a photograph of Anthony and Finn that I found in a locker here in the station. They look happy, even though Finn is a bit older than I remember. Does that mean Anthony was here at some point? So why am I not in it? There's just an ID card here. That's... Anthony's card. Your husband? So he was stationed here. Maybe the logbook stored on the card can give us more detailed information. Yes. Good idea. The computer controls the robot to retrieve boxes from the ceiling. I won't be able to start it without putting the cog back inside. Looks like I can put the cog back. I can retrieve a box for hazardous materials. The other boxes are all assigned to individual employees. I'm going to need their ID cards. The computer controls the robot to retrieve boxes from the ceiling. If you insert an ID card into the card reader, the chest belonging to this employee will be transported down. I can retrieve a box for hazardous materials. The other boxes are all assigned. I'm going to need their ID cards. I can retrieve a box for I'm going to
There's a gas cartridge here, I'll take that. And... Various acids. I could probably use those too. That's going to do much good. What? So Mark really was stationed here. And not too long ago by the looks of it. But even if that's true and my memories were false, where were we going? Attention strap. Why wouldn't it surprise me? Sure enough. Well, now I'm curious. There's a manuscript here. A short story called A Little Monolith. It's signed by Melissa Luna. Damn it, they're broken. Can't I just replace this with one cogwheel? And a strap? Then I could just rebuild them all in the same way. I'll try that, but I need a cogwheel. Mark! That's... that's Mark! Have we been here a few times, maybe? Or were we even stationed here? You go over there. This over here... Malarkey. Yeah. No, not a G. Ah, uh, and I didn't save. What a mess. Redoing all that work's gonna take hours. it contains methyl hydrogen, so methane. A gas whose combustion produces water and carbon dioxide. The test tube fits. I'll fill the bottle up completely. Fragile. I should probably put it over here in case I need them. Hmm. These are just containers and instruments. No ingredients or substance. But they might still be useful.
If I want to mix these acids, I should do it in the right conditions. I'll put them here. I could make use of some highly scientific experiments to find out more about the substances, but the information I'd get from that wouldn't help me right now. Test tubes, pipettes, spoons. Everything a good chemistry set needs. I've put one of the acids here. Maybe I should take it with me again. I can mix the bottle's contents with the acid to test them. But you should do that with precision tools and in the correct containers. These acids are no joke. If I want to mix these acids, I should do it in the right conditions. I'll put them here. Test tubes, pipettes spoons. Everything a good chemistry set needs. I've put one of the acids here. Maybe I should take it with me again. I could make use of some highly scientific experiments to find out more about the substances, but the information I'd get from that wouldn't help me right now. Medical Ward, IMC version 2.49.11. Equipped with an operational assistance robot as well as an injection and blood collection machine. This is a precision machine to create medicines and other liquids. I could make use of some highly scientific experiments to find out more about the substances, but the information I'd get from that wouldn't help me right now. I could make use of some I could make use of some highly scientific experiments to find out more about the substance Test tubes, pipettes, spoons. Everything a good chemistry set needs. I've put one of the acids here. Maybe I should take it with me again. tubes, pipettes, spoons. Everything a good chemistry set needs. Everything except chemicals. If I want to mix these acids, I should do it in the right conditions. I'll put the Substances. This will help me mixing my antidote. Good. There is a compartment for ingredients that just opened. I'm going to need three. Ascorbic acid, my blood, and adrenaline. A few 
few drops of my blood. Test tubes, pipettes. I've put one of the ass. Maybe I should take it. With I want to inject this later. Rule of thumb. Scorbic acid, good acid. Sulfuric, caloric, and other acids, bad acids. Yes, I can mix the bottle's contents with the acid to test them. But you should do that with precision tools and in the correct containers. These acids are no joke. In it are a lot of light capsules for blacklight. But they're all different sizes. Even if I needed them, I'd have no idea what sockets they'd fit into. Another light capsule to compare might be helpful. This juice contains ascorbic acid, which we need in pure form. Mixing it will not help us, Tessa. The citrus fruits contain lots of ascorbic acid, but you need to extract it first. And how? With heat, for example, above 290 degrees Celsius. If I want to mix these acids, I should do it in the right conditions. I'll put them here. I could make use of some highly scientific experiments to find out more about the substances, but the information I'd get from that wouldn't help me right now. I'll start it, just to test it. Ah! Ugh. A few cables have burned out. This around here. Okay. Now they should work again. I have to adjust the wiring to make sure this doesn't happen again. But correctly this time. Someone who didn't know what they were doing did a piss poor job putting it together. The cables are all wrong. Thank you. 
Right, that should do it. I can use the oven now. Okay, now I just put the juice in here, and then we'll wait until there's nothing left but ascorbic crystals. What's the temperature, core? My sensors indicate 19 degrees Celsius. That should be a comfortable temperature for you. It is, but that's not what I wanted to know. What temperature do we need to heat the fruit juice at? You should have asked more precisely. The optimum temperature to obtain near-pure ascorbic acid is 292 degrees Celsius. Good. Let's see then. Looks like that worked. All that's left is a crystalline powder. That must be ascorbic acid. The gas is a good supplement. I'll attach the cartridge. The gas on its own won't heat anything up. I need a spark. I'll ignite it if I want to heat or burn anything. I shouldn't mix it by hand. I need a machine. Some of the powder. I need three ingredients. It makes no sense to start up the machine before. Tubes. I've put one of... maybe I should take... I want to inject this later. Rule of thumb. Scorbic acid? Good acid. Sulfuric, caloric, and other acids? Bad acids. If I want to mix these acids, I should do it in the right conditions. I'll put them here.
I find out more about these samples, I might be able to find out if I can use one of them as a substitute for adrenaline. If I find out more... It's turning the acid... blue. I'll fill in some pure acid. It's turning the acid... black. It's turning the acid... red. It's turning the acid... blue. I'll fill in some pure acid. Maybe I'll find out more about the substances if I burn them. One of them is apparently pretty similar to adrenaline. It's burning green. It's burning... Oh no, it just went up in smoke. It's burning red. It's burning. Oh no, it just went up and. It's burning red. It's burning red. It's burning green. It's burning green. It's burning red. It's burning green. I need three ingredients. It makes no sense to start up the machine before. Okay, which one? 
This one here. Great, we've got all three. Let's get started. I can adjust the ratio here. What ratio do we need, Core? One to two to two. One part of your blood and two parts each of ascorbic acid and adrenaline. To make sure this won't kill me, I should test it on a few drops of my own blood first. Nothing happened. Well, nothing obvious anyway. That's a good thing, right? The hemoglobin molecules are intact and their viscosity is unchanged. Analyzing. No remnant of the serum detected. It should be safe. Use the injection robot for administration. And you're sure this will work? Sure. 99% sure, which means sure with human parameters. Core. Tessa, do you want to get your memories back? <sighs> Fine. Unpleasant, but unavoidable. Medical unit states, second blood sample of unregistered patient successfully extracted. DNA calculation complete. Analysis, all levels normal. Match found. Good day, Commander Carter. Please check the report soon. The next routine examination will take place in 30 days. I wish you a pleasant day, Commander. What? Wait! This means I was stationed here? And... and... as the Commander? Cork, can this be a mistake? A another mix-up? Not even a simple medical bot like that one would confuse your DNA. But let me double-check that for you. Accessing examination data. Confirmed. 100% match. Looks like I've forgotten quite a bit. How many memories did they erase? And why? I'm an explorer. I want to explore unknown worlds. Not in my worst nightmares would I have settled down in a depressing station like this with a garbage incinerator. I can remember the promotion Mr. Bishop offered me. Damn it. I'm still dreaming of it! Alert! Forceful entry into living quarters detected. Emergency lockdown terminated for employees. We have to go there, to the living quarters! Necessary for survival. Drilling halted. Gates closed. Are the rovers on their way? Rover 1 is on its way southeast. Number 2 still has a technical problem? How bad is it? I don't have any idea. There's a mechanic working on it. Good. Then go ahead and pack your things. Understood.
There's nobody here. Core, which one is my quarter? This one over here. But it won't open. Of course not. Otherwise anyone could get into anyone's private rooms. Good, so our mysterious figure probably hasn't made it here yet. Remember what happened last time. We need to be careful. Yes, you're right. It won't open. So this is where I lived, as a commander, with my family. Yes, that's Finn. He's younger here, but here he's much older. The newer pictures were taken here in the station. So they were here, together with me, and they seem happy. And then... It doesn't look like we left here in an orderly fashion. More like something surprised us and we had to flee. So why was I out there without them? And why did I come back? Why should someone want me to forget all this? And who is Melissa Luna? Cor, my head feels like it's about to explode. Please lock the door. I've had enough for today. Of course, I will keep watch. Well, honey, what have you decided? I accepted it. Hey, in that case, congratulations to the new lead. Thank you. It's going to be a lot of work and a big adjustment, but I think it's the best thing for us. The right thing. Together we'll get there. This name, Melissa Luna, that meant nothing to you? No. Should it mean something? Didn't you think it was strange that it kept showing up on this foreign planet? Of course it was strange, but... Well, I didn't understand it then, and I still don't. Did someone steal my identity? Melissa Luna does exist then maybe she can tell me what she was doing on that planet. Maybe. We're trying to contact her at the moment. That might explain a few things. We will see. Good morning, Tessa. There were no occurrences during the night. How are you feeling? Good morning, Cor. So-so. I'm rested, but there's still so much going on in my head. I... I dreamed of Finn. I remembered Anthony standing next to his crib. Was that here? No. It was a strange old house, but it was a pleasant memory. It makes me happy to know that we were here together, but now I'd like to know where they are, and why I'm not with them. We can start the signal once we have repaired the communications console. The quicker you find them, the quicker you can ask them. Hmm. 
It's nice of you to motivate me like this. But really, all you want is my company so you don't have to spend the rest of your life alone on this planet. I am merely concerned about your survival. That is my task. I am of secondary importance. In my memories, the two of them lived in a different place for years. But instead they were here. I think I'll be saved before I get to talk to them through the communications console. Would that be so bad? No, but the answer to what happened to them and where I can find them is here, Kor. They might still be on this planet. And if someone is trying to make me forget everything so badly, I should gather every single drop of memory I can before I leave. Understood. So, we will look for more information. Hmm. Some sort of manuscript. It's titled, No Progress Without Obstacles. It's about an IMC employee called Nolan. I remember Tony liked to test read stuff for colleagues. Essays, papers, entire books. But there's no name on the manuscript. There is a picture of the three of you here. I remember that day. It was one of our family outings. And this picture here is Finn's third birthday. This bed looks like it's big enough for two people. Anthony and I probably slept here. I don't have to lie down now. We need to find out what happened and where everyone went. If you wanted to, you could refresh yourself here. We have more important things to do, Kor. At least I can turn off my olfactory sensors. Oh, that's interesting. There have to be some hints for a safe as strange as this one. There's a light capsule missing here. You're coming with me. A small bed, freshly made. Finn must have been sleeping here. There's not much here. Some clothes. Nothing useful, I think. Wait a minute. There's an injection gun here. Just like in the control room. It's empty. Is this a coincidence? I'll leave it here. Tony and I used to just love sitting there and reading. And what about Finn? Did he like reading, too, or did you have to read to him? If I remember correctly, he couldn't read, but he loved listening. These were probably the books that were suitable for Finn. 
This one is about a British soldier who's looking for his friend and has to solve all kinds of problems on the way, and then finds a place of legend. There's exactly one black light emitter with this socket size. What sort of hidden things you can bring to light? Oh, yes, there's something written here. Looks like a small formula. A chess piece and then X plus five. I'll write it down. There's a small symbol there, followed by a formula with an X in it. Whatever X is. A chess piece and then X plus five. I've written it down. You're coming with me. I'll take it with me again. Let's see what sort of hidden things you can bring to light. I've seen all there is to see. Let's hope there's more hidden somewhere else. You're coming with me. Let's see what sort of hidden things you can bring to light. There's another formula here. I'll write it next to the other one. A square, and then x times three. Oh, there's something visible in the black light on the inside here. 
There's another formula here. I'll write it next to the other one. 10 minus x. You're coming with me. A black light emitter right above our bed? I wonder if that's such a good idea. Why not? Uh, could you maybe flip your optical sensors around? Why? What is there to see? Just look at the door until I tell you otherwise. Confirmed. Nothing. Well, nothing that would help us either. Hello? Oh, you can turn around again. What was the point of that? Biological paranoia. I've seen all there is to see. Let's hope there's more hidden somewhere else. I'll take that. Is this the right time to redecorate? Let's see what hidden things you can reveal. There's another formula here. I'll write it next to the other one. A bird and then x minus 3. be a way to open this. It looks like you don't need a special code for it. <sighs> Finally! Come on, I must have hidden something interesting here. <sighs> this is finally my real ID card. Commander Tessa Carter. Maybe I can find something in the logbook. You could also use it to reactivate me. Good idea. But, uh... Won't that erase your memory or something? No, that should not happen. Good. Come here, then. Registering Commander Carter. Core? Confirmed. Is it you? I mean, like before. My basic subroutines cannot answer philosophical questions. <sighs> then let me put it this way. Do you remember? Short-term memory cache empty. No backup available. <sighs> Damn. Awaiting input. Input? <laughs> Damn it. I'd have to start with Adam and Eve for you to understand our situation. At least you've stopped making stupid jokes. You always wanted me to be more humorous. <laughs> I knew you were playing with me. It's nice to see you're not just a cold-hearted machine. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you. But back to business. Do you have any new information that might help us? Not as such, but thanks to your authorization as commander, I was able to access the hitherto locked hologram recordings. That sounds good. Let's not waste any time. Tony. 
more field work? As commander of the station, everything will be less dangerous? Isn't that what you said? And yet you're on this mission to make sure everything's being done correctly. I understood you. I was always there to support you. But then you made a mistake and... I misjudged you. Because of the emergency protocol, every single team member's location was checked to begin rescuing them. This revealed that Tessa Carter isn't out there. But instead, flying with Mark is someone called Melissa Luna. Who is this Melissa Luna, I wondered. And so I asked the vice commander, the doctor, everyone. Nobody knows. The entries and examinations, all forged. According to the mission data, she was part of all kinds of missions in the last few years. First-rate references, lots of results. She could be your rival. And then I had this nagging idea. I compared her mission data to yours. Melissa Luna was always on expeditions whenever you had to work. Usually while you were out somewhere else. Whenever you had to leave for an emergency, or when there were issues with the radio units. Anything that would need the attention of a commander. And at the same time, Melissa Luna was out exploring with the rover. But because Melissa Luna doesn't exist, there's only one explanation. You were driving across the planet in that rover, and fed the rover with forged data. Otherwise someone might have noticed. Me. I swore I'd love and cherish you. I'd support you in whatever you did, and I would have, even with this, if you had trusted me. But instead, you kept it a secret and lied to me. You always want to do everything on your own and without help. I... I just don't get it. I want to see you again and talk about this. I'm sure you can explain everything. We've had contact from a ship that can evacuate us. Who knows if we'll ever get a chance like this again. And so I voted against waiting for your return. I want to begin the evacuation as soon as possible. Unfortunately, my vote was the deciding one. Maybe I'll come to regret this. But staying here, and maybe even losing Finn? Instead of you, I... I can't. I hate myself, but... All oh, the stuff recently... Forgive me. I'd love to say none of this makes sense. But as shocking as it is, it also fits the picture. You still have no recollection of any of this? Just fragments. I think it's getting better. I remember the emptiness of not feeling any thrills. No challenges. And the fear of disappointing everyone if I were to return to my old job. The one I really wanted to live. But to think I'd go that far and do everything in secret? I wouldn't have thought that. And that's why I wasn't with them when they fled. Then why become commander? That dilapidated house I saw Anthony and Finn in last night. It belonged to Tony's parents. We lived there when Finn was born because we couldn't afford our own place yet. And it didn't get better afterwards. Maybe I thought I could kill two birds with one stone. Adventures for me, all while being paid properly and being able to provide for my family. Maybe Tony thought I was being selfish. <laughs> and maybe he was right. Either way, a bit off more than I could chew. But at least now we know where they are. They have been evacuated, picked up, and brought to safety. They were fleeing from something. We know that for sure. Tony was so scared of it. So scared for Finn, that he even left me behind. We have to find out what they were fleeing from, and if they... If they made it. We have access to all readable hologram recordings now. Yes, you're right. The truth has to be here somewhere. We just have to find it.
happy to see you, Mr. Bishop. I don't want to keep you. You're doing an outstanding job. But there is some important news. In just about a year's time, you will be able to leave this planet. The yields have been decreasing, which has nothing to do with you, and the trade routes have shifted. All those involved will receive compensation and alternative positions, or other options and settlements, whatever they prefer. That... well... what can I say? I will inform my staff. I will be speaking to a few of your team members personally. Your husband, for instance. But apart from that, are there any grievances you have to report? Well, we're missing a team. They should have gotten back yesterday, but there was a storm in that sector, so we're not too worried yet. The second rover and a team is ready to look for them, but so far we don't think that's necessary. Insightful. I agree with you. Nevertheless, keep an eye out. Of course. Always. Three planets within the solar system can be reached. Their calculated vitality is at 22, 29, and 42%. As a comparison, this planet is at 94%. Their distances are two days, two days again, and four days respectively. The ship has enough power for 10 to 11 days, depending on whether there are any complications and how much energy it would take to navigate the planet. Pretty tight, then. I've seen worse. True. Save the third planet's coordinates on the ship, and thanks for your efforts. You seem pretty sure. Yes. It's unpleasant, but... I meant you seem happy. What? No, I'm not happy with these circumstances at all. I mean, I enjoy and miss the thrill of a challenge. I have to admit, that sort of thing just gives me... Life. <laughs> Energy. But I would prefer if there was not so much at stake. What's this, Core? That's a mission console. With this, you can access saved locations and expeditions from this station's past. Scanning. I can find no evacuation data. We can take a look at it anyway, even if it won't get us anywhere. are open and the garbage incinerator is generating power. I shouldn't change. A console. I won't leave this place until I find out what happened.
Okay, quiet please, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Yesterday, we received a reply from the Calenco. They will reach us in two days. As it's a pretty big ship, they are going to have to land outside in a quite far away sector. We have set up an emergency shelter and we'll get everybody there. What about those who are still out there? They're two days overdue and aren't reacting to any radio signals. We don't know their exact location. We have no choice. And that's enough for us to just abandon them? Let me explain what we have planned. Then we can discuss everything. And considering the situation, I would be happy to vote on this. Okay? Good. So, our plan is to lock down the facility with the NOAA evacuation protocol. We can easily keep the doors to the lab and storage open by other means. Iron bars should do the trick. That way they will have access to tools and food. We will only take what we need for the evacuation. The Kalenko is equipped with long-range scanning technology and life support systems. Maybe we can convince the commander to wait a few days. Even if our missing crew members can't contact us, we will notice their re-entry into the atmosphere. The commander is going to go nuts and do nothing when we tell him what's happened here. Tessa and Mark are dying out there. It's just like when Brown and Summers didn't show up again. If it's as bad as you say and as bad as we all think, then we shouldn't be staying here, should we? They'd have done the same, however reluctantly because it's our best chance at survival. In fact, those are our orders. But my offer still stands. We can hold a vote. Commander Carter, I hope this message reaches you in time. I've tried to reach you on every single channel. There's been no reply so far. But I'm trying one final time. We've started the evacuation protocol NOAA, and almost completed it. A rescue ship is on its way and will pick us up. We have already set up a temporary shelter at the evacuation point. We haven't heard from any other ships. I can't say when we'll be able to send out a team to get you. I don't even know if the corporation will be willing to do that. They wanted to abandon this outpost anyway, as you know. The whole team and their families, they're all either already at the evacuation point or will be there soon. I'll join them in a moment. We've had problems with our vehicles, but we haven't had time to take care of them. I will be reluctantly using the last functioning rover to get to the evacuation point. One of the broken rovers remains in the hangar. I hope you and Mark can get it working again. I also hope you will get back in time and that I will see you again. The evacuation point sector in the database is 29-14-Z- That's her core. That means it can't be Mark. But then she was the danger we ran away from. So she was here then. It looked like she was keeping the security officer from speaking. Yes. However she did that. She was a few meters away from him. But she didn't want me to find out this point's name. She said that it wasn't planned that he couldn't speak? What does this all mean? How long ago was this, Core? 79 days. The sector began with 2914? That wasn't all. The evacuation point should be listed in the database and reachable by rover. They won't be there anymore, Tessa. I hope so. You still want to go there? It could take weeks to repair this console. Months until we establish contact with a ship. Setbacks, despair, boredom, solitude. And all the while we'll have a mysterious figure running around. Sooner or later, I'll be sitting in that rover, trying to figure out what I'm doing all this for, and if my family managed to get away. To safety. I should have that certainty before I put everything I've got into repairing this thing. That is illogical. The longer you survive, the higher the chance of getting that certainty is, and your chances of survival are highest here. 
I know it's illogical, but I have to do it. I have to follow my instincts. You can manipulate your instincts. I know that from other interactions with humans. Just imagine hugging them tightly. My thoughts are only showing me how they're sitting there, huddled up in fear in a makeshift shelter, waiting for salvation that never comes. Or never came. I have to get that thought out of my head. Only then can I concentrate on my own survival. I do not have enough limbs to physically hinder you. According to the security officer, they made their way to an evacuation point which lies in a sector beginning with 29 to 14. The final two digits are missing. Without them, we are unable to locate the evacuation point with certainty. I only know one part of the evacuation point's coordinates. I'm missing two more numbers, and it could be any of them. We only know part of the sector name of the evacuation point, 29 to 14, but two digits are missing and probably only the security officer knows them. We only know part of the sector name of the evacuation point, 29 to 14, but two digits are missing and I saw it with my own eyes, Tessa. She transformed the drill room in seconds while floating in the air. I believe you. We have to evacuate with the shuttle. Where to? It's capable of flying through space, but is used for locomotion on the planet. It doesn't have enough power to get us all to any spaceport. And there are reasons why we are not on the other planets drilling for resources. They are barely habitable. So should we just wait? No. We go for double security. We will send out a distress signal for an evacuation. Our best chance is that a ship will hear it and get us out of here. At the same time, we will examine the most promising accessible planet for a chance of survival. The scouts will come back. In case no other ship has arrived and the planet is habitable, we will evacuate on our own with the shuttle. That is risky, especially for the scouts. I am the best pilot. I will fly. <laughs> I thought so. I will accompany you. What? Joe, you can do this. Mark and I have been a team for many years and have the most experience of anyone here in exploring alien planets. I will not entrust this mission to anyone else in my place and put him or her in that kind of danger. You guys set the signal, get everything ready, and seal off the station until we return or you get picked up. Alright. Good. I need a list of all the planets and the scientific assessment of their habitability and distance. Understood. Okay. Everyone ready? The emergency lockdown is about to be initiated. Ready! Very good. Here it goes. Warning. Emergency lockdown. Damn it! <gasps> there he is! He... He stopped specifically to point at something. It can only be the sign. Level O2. Could these be the last numbers of the evacuation point? 
This is very possible. But would also be a great coincidence. 291402. You should be able to find the mission point in the console on the right side in the control room. That's not right. Core, what's the sector's name again? 29-14-02. Great, thanks. I'll keep looking. That's not right. Core, what's the sector's name again? 29-14-02. Great, thanks. the point the security officer was talking about. Let's have a look then. A fully functioning rover could manage this route, yes. I doubt the one in the hangar would manage it. I have to repair it and check the analysis program to find out more. This is not the vehicle that is available to us. A fully functioning rover could- I doubt the one in the hand. You could set a route, but as long as we don't know what sort of terrain the rover is capable of, that would be pointless. So we have to repair it first and then analyze it. Okay, so we'll definitely need the rover. I guess we'll play mechanic after all. Thanks for not pointing out that Mark would come in handy right now. start and it just shows error
There was nothing else in it. We need to lifting points. Tessa, these straps are not long enough. The hook can hold these straps easily. I can lift or pull something heavy with this construction. It would help if I attached the straps to the object in question, though. I'm pretty sure I'll find something better to do with this strap now that the gate's open.
three tension straps. Perfect for joining things together, or giving large, unwieldy things a point of connection. the hook through the straps, but as long as the shovel is open, I can't wedge the hook in. Right, I can attach the hook to the straps. And where do I put the hook? Wedge that in there to give it a good grip. Okay, the hook is attached to the straps and the crane. And up we go. Carefully. Let's hope the crane endures. Someone removed the battery. It was probably broken and needs to be replaced. I guess a AA battery won't cut it. No, you need a compatible model with various specifications. What a surprise, Core. Please look for the next convenience store so I can go and buy one. Would you like the distance in kilometers or light years? <laughs> Fine, I get it. Well then, let's look for a special battery that you probably need to be a mechanic for you to understand it. Of course, the analysis program was right. The axle mounting is broken, but it shouldn't be too hard to get it out. And that's that. I'll take it with me. This part is from the rover's axle mounting, and it's broken. I have to find some way to replace it. There's a serial number here. GN2144FN. I can retrieve a box for hazardous materials. The other boxes are all assigned to individual employees. I'm going to need their ID cards. Hmm. I should be able to recreate the mounting with this. Maybe I can find the model in the computer. I can't just put these parts in like this. The 3D printer needs the metal to be homogeneous. I can retrieve a box for hazardous ma I'm going to need their ID.
The computer controls the robot to retrieve boxes from the ceiling. If you insert an ID card into the card reader, the chest belongs... A 3D printer that can print metallic objects with virtual 3D models. But there's no material in it. This controls the 3D printer and has a lot of parts to choose from. Here, that's the axle mounting serial number. I'll save it to my favorites. So it says here that we need at least 500 grams of... rainy metal, an alloy. The object itself is only about 440 grams, but the printer needs more material for the process to support the model. That's why we need 500 grams. Where can we get rainy metal? Rainy metal is mostly made up of gaffinium, so it is a relatively new substance. Due to its high stability and lightweight, it is mostly used to make vehicles. Gaffinium was only discovered a few decades ago. Following this discovery, facilities like this one were constructed everywhere to obtain it. You will not be able to find it in the machines or walls here, but it was being mined here, so there must be some of it somewhere. Majalt is also a rare metal, but it has been known for much longer. It used to be used in all kinds of things, but ever since they found out it made a profitable alloy with gaffinium, it has become incredibly valuable. So we need pure majalt and gaffinium. I registered majalt before. The screws in the workbench down there are made from majalt. Confirmed. Majalt screws. That means you already have some with you. Excellent. Now all I need is gaffinium. Calibrate your environmental scan to specifically look for these important elements. There has to be some gaffinium somewhere around here. just like you said. The output is getting lower, and the impurities are getting stronger. Shoot. Alright, thanks. The transport ship has already made contact and will be here soon. Please discuss with Anthony how we might extract the gaffinium. There must be a way. Understood. What is this mess? What happened up there? That's just it, Mark. Like I said, everything's changed. And we're not just talking about moving around a chair or painting the walls. The console was moved to the other side, the corner was intact, and, and, and... Who did this? I don't know who she is, but it's got to be the one Fry told me about. She never even touched this stuff.
Mark was here, he might have been able to use it to get energy for the rover. But without his or anyone else's help, I won't get far here. What's this hole for? It looks like it's bottomless. Hello? Echo! A drilling hole for the mining of substrate samples. Small amounts are transported up these holes in order to specifically drill for mineral deposits. I assume this area of the outpost was constructed first. The machine above it can be replaced by a mechanical drill or a suction tube to, in certain cases, employees have to climb down to the IMC's and done. I don't need paragraphs. These thick cables lead down into the shaft, probably to power the lamps and other stuff down there. What's this device? A robot arm with a universal mounting, it can pull in If Mark was here, he might have been able to use it to get energy for the The answer is everywhere. Wizard of Oz mission. Don't get me started. More like Baba Yaga the Witch. What are you talking about? She just showed up, man. At least I think it was a woman. Watch your tone when you're talking to me. And what happened then? She made him disappear. He was gone. We saw her stand on a cliff. A woman in a spacesuit. Kenneth approached her and... And she looked at him. Boom! One gesture of her hand, and he was gone. What do you mean, gone? Gone as in turned to dust. Are you drunk? Did this woman not see you? No, I was hidden behind a hill. Then she started turning towards me, and I jumped into the rover and drove off. I got beat up pretty bad, but I didn't care. <laughs> And you want me to believe this hogwash? Yes, I know what I saw. I maybe don't know who it is, but... That woman was wearing one of our suits. Right. You're going to medical. Right now. Have them check out your head. Any ideas? Because I'm stumped. Nope, the solar module is broken and we don't have a replacement. And the cables don't fit the hydrogen systems because nobody is able to decide on a standard for them yet. You know? The emergency generator by the drilling hole has a battery that it charges while it's running. That one might fit. Mark would kill you. Yeah, it would only last a couple of hours. But if they ever pick the rover up, well at least they wouldn't have to push it. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. 
It's supposed to contain a battery that fits into the rover. This cylinder down here looks like the compartment for it. This has to be the compartment the mechanic was talking about. Alright, I guess all the cables have to come off first. some elements and materials written down here. This room is the drilling station. The machine on the ceiling can utilize multiple attachments. It is currently equipped with a magnet beam which loosens parts from underground and transfers magnetic metals to the surface. Workers can climb down the sides to manually retrieve non-magnetic sediment from the ground or to carry out repairs. It looks like this room has a self-contained power supply system. The room is mainly made of titanium. There is gaffinium among the ore samples. Tessa. There are other materials mixed in, but there should be enough for the axle mounting. Would you like me to fly into this dark, obvious, menacing, apparently bottomless hole? Well, yes. as empty as a black hole, but it hasn't quite got the same pull. One of these ore samples contains gaffinium, which is exactly what we need for the axle mounting. But it's too big to carry. Plus, there are other elements mixed in. We have to somehow extract the gaffinium.
precision scale discreetly integrated into the table. Lots of bottles with chemical inside. There was nothing else in it. There were just a few texts in there that I don't think are going to help me. There's a manuscript here, a short story called... It's signed by... Written logbook, like mine. Every page describes a desolate place, maybe here on this planet, and then some kind of fantasy story that fits that place. A city, a battle, animals made of metal, something like that. I can retrieve a box for hazardous materials. The other boxes are all assigned to individual employees. I'm going to need their ID cards. Various acids. I could probably use those too. I shouldn't carry around more than two of these acids. Various acids. I could probably use those too. A bit of this. 
this. A bit of this. There are materials in the mixer. I'll activate it. Now this should be Aqua Regia. Should work. <laughs> oh yeah, all the little gizmos in the rover are coming to life. He's all powered up. I don't have to put the broken axle mounting back in. I need a replacement. These scales will help me when it comes to finding the correct mixing ratio. But first I need some Gaffinium. Four hundred and forty grams of rainy metal. These scales will help me when it comes to finding the correct mixing ratio. But first I need some gaffinium.
workbench full of trash and signs of wear and tear. That's what every DIY enthusiast dreams of. And of course, no workbench would be complete without a pile of old, insignificant notes and scribbles. This controls the three... One of these parts is the act... I don't really need anything else. At least nothing as important as the axle mounting. The axle mounting I need for the rover. I could print the mounting with this, but there's no material. I already have my old screws. Gaffinium was mined here, so I should be able to find some remnants here somewhere. Core, please also scan for Gaffinium and rainy metal. Added to parameters, Tessa. A multi-purpose room. It was originally meant as a storage room, but now it contains multiple computers and a kind of workshop area. My sensors cannot detect any guffinium. This sample contains none of the metal I need. I shouldn't waste the acid. This sample contains none of the metal I need. I shouldn't waste the acid. This sample contains This sample contains none of the metal I need. This sample contains none of the metal I need. I shouldn't waste the acid. This or sample contains no gaffinium. This or sample contains no gaffinium. This sample is made of 60% gaffinium, 15% iron, 12% copper, 3% silver, and 10% gold. The hydrochloric acid is eating its way through the rock, splitting the ore. It's making it porous, but it's not moving otherwise. This sample is made of 70% gaffinium, 15% copper, 3% silver, and 12% gold. It's dissolving everything, except the gaffinium. It's crumbling into chunks, I can take them with me. Let's get those metals weighed. Okay, this rainy metal has a special composition. We'll just weigh the materials one after the other and then mix them. A good and logical plan, Tessa. Derivations of one gram for a total amount of 50 grams is still within tolerance parameters, according to my calculations, but the printer might not accept any derivations larger than that as rainy metal.
Okay, then let's mix them and hope they're in the right ratio. We can still separate them for now. The metal has melted and turned into a block. And in it goes. I should try printing so the computer can tell me if this is the correct alloy. This controls the 3D printer and has a lot of parts to choose from. One of these parts is the act. Error. It's the right material, but not enough of it. We need at least 500 grams of rainy metal, but there are only in the printer. <sighs> Great, the alloy is correct. Let's get going then. This would have taken ages a few years ago, but modern machines can do it in a few minutes. We are a brand new axle mounting. Looks good. Can you show me what part belongs where? Ah, thanks. Done. Finished. Everything's repaired. Let's get it down and start analysis to check out what it's still capable of. We can let it back down again. Let's get rid of these straps first. know what sort of terrain I can drive across with it. Start analysis program. Vehicle ready to start with restrictions. Great! It won't last long due to a long service life, material fatigue, and other issues. But it should work. Core, please save the data so we can look for a good route at the mission console. Thank you. 
fully functioning rover could manage this route, yes. But ours won't. We're going to have to look for a different route. One that's within our parameters. Okay, Kor, show me the parameters the rover is still capable of. Yes, this route fits our parameters. All right, we've got a route. One moment. The rover will only just barely make it back to the station. The tolerance range is 19%. Complications and detours can therefore lead to it being exhausted outside the station. That's a risk we have to take. Theoretically, it should work, right? Theoretically, but practically, a few days ago, you didn't want to stay in the supposedly safe ship and wait because it would have endangered your survival and rescue. Here, you have every option. Safety, resources, tools, and machines. You can survive and call for help. You have already reached your goal. Instead, you want to go on a risky journey just to get a certainty that doesn't help you. I have registered irrational adventurousness in you before. Is that what this is about again? This is just about my family. Your family was either saved, in which case you will not see them after this journey, or they are dead, in which case you cannot help them. And Mark. What about Mark? You could hardly wait to leave the ship and explore the planet. You did not care about Mark Bennett's fate, and now you are using your family as pretense to carry on. Yes, understood. It was only about me at the beginning. I wanted to explore and survive in that with all the means I had. Even if I didn't have the slightest clue where Mark was. Maybe I could have done more. I don't know. But it seemed like the right thing to do. Now I'm here and I could survive forever. No, exist. In the sense of not starving or dying of thirst. Is that enough? Not for me. It drives me crazy not to know where Tony and Finn are, and if they're okay. Achieving and discovering all of this feels so... pointless. So empty. But you've been in this situation many times as an explorer and have successfully blocked out thoughts about your family, haven't you? Yes. Technically. Sure, but, Kor, this Melissa Luna is trying to keep something from me. Maybe she's setting me up, I don't know. All I know is she doesn't want me to find out something about my family. If I stay here, I might be safe, but I'll remain clueless. I can't live like that. I have to take risks. No progress without obstacles. We'll sleep here and set off for the evacuation point tomorrow morning. I'll sleep in the rover just to make sure this person won't sabotage it. And you stay on lookout. Everything's prepared and ready. I should probably get a night's sleep before I leave, though. Kor? Yes, Tessa. What... what did the sun say to the Earth? I'd just be a star without you. Is that really the punchline? No, my humor subroutines generated this joke with AI. Was it ineffective? <laughs> I suppose. Or maybe my humor subroutines are broken down. Or maybe AI just isn't as far ahead as we all thought. Good night, Kor. Good night, Tessa. I will keep watch. You know I support you. You should do whatever makes you happy. Don't do anything just for the money. We'll pull through anything, one way or another. Both of us. Together. The money is worth nothing if it stresses you out and doesn't let you sleep. You're probably right, Tony. I still have to think about it.
mean a lot to you. Yes, Tony always supported me. But sometimes when the thirst for adventure overcomes me, I guess I sort of block them out too much. What about your son? What about him? Didn't he miss his mother whenever she set off for the stars? He did, but I... It's what I live for. <laughs> I doubt that was much comfort to him, but... Maybe he'll be old enough to understand one day. Maybe he'll reach for the stars himself. He likes adventure books. I see. So you were able to leave the station, could you? Yes. Uh, everything was ready, so I... Good morning, Tessa. Good morning. How are you feeling? Pretty good, surprisingly. Don't ask me why, but I'm in the mood for adventure. Like, I'm excited because I'm going on vacation today. This mixture of departure, curiosity, and, and fear of having forgotten something. And then this Melissa Luna comes into my head. The station's signals and data show no anomalies, and there were no attacks or dangers throughout the night. That's something. We can either take a last look at the station or we can head out straight away. I don't really want to waste any time. The station's signals and data show no anomalies, and there were no attacks or dangers throughout the night. Wait, I have to make myself comfortable first. Yeah, make yourself at home. Have a scone. Come on! rather expected a small shelter at the evacuation point, instead of a huge monolith. My scanners are too inaccurate at this distance. We need to get closer, then I can calculate more precisely whether it is a natural or artificial construction. And there's the other rover, as if it ran out of power. 
Any signs of life core? None apart from your own. Maybe we can find clues on the rover. Stay where you are! What? Who are you? I am Melissa Luna. I don't mean your name. I want to know who you are. What is this all about? Tessa, I can detect her vital signs now. It's as if she appeared out of thin air. Of course you can detect my vital signs. At least you can when you concentrate, Tessa. When you think of me. In case you're not trying to erase me off the face of the world. What? I don't even know who you are. Who are you? And why did you inject that stuff into me? Like I said, Melissa Luna. You liked that name. And I only do as you demanded. There is no Melissa Luna. And I've never demanded anything of you. Now show me who you really are. Okay. Maybe you'll finally understand. wanted to be with my family. Nothing more. Oh, but you always wanted more. Experience more. Do more. Experience so much that it would be enough for two lives. And so, you created me instead of getting help. And now I'm here to help you. For good. Accept it. I'm not going to accept anything. That's the Tessa Carter I know. Why did you attack us at the station? Destroy machinery. Kill people. Can't, Can't I destroy what I myself created? I tried to adjust everything in order to make sense. It really looks like the station's been abandoned for quite a while now. Don't you think? We should have made it like that from the start. I hate to admit it, but they were right with their suggestions for improvement. They? And what makes you think you created anything or anyone? You're not a goddess! Are you sure? Oh, Tessa, you're so humble. You need to take control and stick with one direction. Make difficult decisions. Restrictions can be a godsend for creativity. Did you give me a restriction by destroying the station's communication console? Yes! yes. Good, Good example. example. Sometimes you just have to ignore the things that are distracting you. Especially when they're nothing but memories. Where is Mark? I've been wondering that too. I don't know. Questions concerning individual fates can't always be answered. I hope he's okay, and that everyone remembers him. I could call him, but it would just be an echo. A replica of what he could have been. I don't understand. If you can call him, then call him! He wouldn't be himself, Tessa. Just accept that he's been forgotten. Why did you want to stop me for calling for help at the station? You should be grateful. All I did was protect you from moments of weakness. You don't need help, Tessa. You're fine on your own. We... We don't need them. I don't, and neither do you. Just as you hesitated in the ship's wreckage whether you should wait or not, Sometimes, you just need a little push to get you going. I just had to make sure Joe wouldn't get the idea of coming here into your head. 
Looks like I failed there. I thought you'd see the broken communications console and welcome change. A chance to prove yourself. Instead, you come here, following some vague possibility of seeing your family. Maybe you misjudged me. I am you. That's like saying I misjudged myself. That's impossible. What are you? You're not me! <laughs> what do you think? That I'm a clone? An alien taking your shape? An ancient power that was banished to this planet eons ago? I'd love to tell you that I'm more than you could even imagine. <laughs> but that would be a lie. You're just here by accident. It should have been Nolan instead of you, but then the accident happened. And since then you haven't been able to think straight. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. It's too late. Go back, as long as you still can. Eventually, you and the station will be found. And then you'll be famous. All thanks to me. Famous? I want to survive and be with my family! I feared you might. Use the station worker's evacuation point. My family has to be around here somewhere. You're almost there. But they've moved on. Without sparing a thought for you. Do you believe me now? You can only trust yourself. Ourselves. They're not here anymore. I won't allow you to find them. You, you just, just destroy, destroy everything, everything we've worked for. What? Wait! Where is the rover and... Oh, there she is! I can see an entrance. Let me through! That's, That's not, not how, how this works, works Tessa. Tessa. What are you on about? How do you know where I want to go? us. Forget, Forget it. Give, give up. You, you really think, think you can survive, survive like this? I am way beyond that. Who was she, Kor? She was speaking in riddles. She looked like me, but as if she were inside my head. I do not have an answer, Tessa. Her vital signs matched yours 100%, but they were slightly weaker, as if she was only a fragment. A fragment. <laughs> and this. This doesn't look like the station's technology. Nor is it natural in any way. Can you tell me anything about it? Two. Much information. Core. No signs of life. Okay. There's only one way anyway.
What? What? What is that? Does it hurt, Tessa? No, but I can't move. Maybe I can do something. Be careful, Kor. Kor! It worked. Kor, are you okay? Of course, no problem. <laughs> You're smoking. It's just a cable wound. What is that? There has to be a way to turn it off. Wait. No, Cord, don't. Stop it, Cord. There has to be another way. It doesn't look like it, Tessa. Cord, what are you doing? Wait, there's still one of those things active over there. Yes, one of them. Remember, sometimes you need help from others. But that doesn't mean you should go too far. You won't survive that. You can leave it to the other person to decide how far they should go. Either way, you need to get in there. I am detecting two life signals. It's unpleasant, but unavoidable. Cord, don't! Stay with me! No! Oh, Cord... Come on! No... My little friend, you didn't have to do that. I'm sure you did that for a reason. Thank you. Two life signals, he said. How is that possible? I have a bad feeling about this. Why are you hesitating? I... it's... my memories of what happened then. Yes? They're weird. Blurry? No, I can see it clearly, but... I don't understand them. Maybe I can help you. Please just go on. Tell me everything the way you remember. So you entered the passage. And then, I was in a library. Incredible. I thought this was a strange but natural feature that was used as a shelter. But this? An old globe of the earth, with a pin in my hometown. A painting of... oh god. It looks like the painting is moving and the landscape is changing. Just a nice crackling fireplace. Lots of books. I feel like I know them. Not just the titles, but like I've read them. But they keep repeating. I used to read in one of these a lot. It stood in that old house that belonged to Anthony's parents. Finn often sat on my lap and I read stories to him. Now, 
I'm going completely insane. What? What is that? This thing looks like me. It feels like happiness. It's scary, but it also feels so familiar. What was that? Oh. Tony? Oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You okay? I know. I had to work longer. An important project had to be finished today. What? Is that me? I see. Well, our little man is still awake and refusing to sleep. I know it's my evening, but I think he'd like you to read him a story. Oh, yes, of course. I'd love to, but... I'm just so tired. I promise I'll come home sooner in the future. It's okay. I understand. Too bad he can't. Yes. I'd be grumpy too if my only problem was the wrong person taking me to bed. Right, Finn? I can't. Not today, honey. I've been reading all day long. I think I'd fall asleep before him. Okay, Tessa. I understand. I'll take him to bed with me. Yes. I'm sorry, but yes, fine. I'll sleep in the spare room. Thanks. Good night. This isn't real. I'm in our old house. This was years ago. Back on Earth. Please, Anthony, please open up. It's me. Tony! Finn! I vaguely remember. I was working overtime, but I don't remember why. Or what I was working on. I remember I had to read a ton, and even had to take eye drops to relieve the strain. Field reports, maybe? New expeditions? But what's this here? Honey, we have to get going. See you this evening. Come on, we're late. Tony, Finn, please wait! What? Where are they? Why is Finn so old all of a sudden? Hello? I'm losing my mind. again. September 28th, 2002. On that computer! Shambhala Group Inc. Publishing Company. Lead Editor. Tessa Carter? What? I don't understand. There's a document. It says Melissa Luna on it. But I can't touch anything. Oh, damn it. 
Hey, honey, I know I'm late. I'll head out in a minute. I see. Why are you working so late again? Lots to do. I have to edit a pretty long chapter. Sure. I tried to call you earlier. I guess you haven't listened to your voicemail. No, sorry. Great. Would have been important to me, but whatever. I'm gonna need my black tie tomorrow. The one Mark borrowed. You got it? He's already gone. Oh, of course. Because he knows he's got a life beside work. I should have known. I just forgot. Yes. Fine. But is everything else prepared for tomorrow? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is... September 29th? 2 p.m.? Noah? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. But you're the lead editor who can postpone meetings and leave whenever she wants. Isn't that what you said? Honey, the funeral is at 2 p.m. 1400. I'll get Finn and take him with me. We'll meet there. Please come. There's a meeting at 11 a.m. I can't postpone it anymore. But it won't take long. I'll be there. Good. Don't make too much noise when you come home. You have one new message. Hey, honey, it's me. I've sent you an email with the pictures for the condolence card. You know, because your printer's better. Uh, please remember to fill out your vacation forms. I have to hand mine in today, but I won't do that until your vacation's been approved. Oh, uh, and most importantly, don't forget the black tie Mark borrowed off me. Okay? Call me back. Condolence card, tie, vacation. Damn, I keep forgetting stuff like this. Secretly writing a book at work might not have been the best idea. <laughs> but just a few more weeks and it's done. He could give me some space, to be honest. Noah. I remember him. An old colleague of Tony's. A good friend. Anthony was heartbroken when he died. And I didn't even bother writing his funeral into my calendar. They seem like memories. Familiar and clear. I could even remember parts of the conversation. I've never worked in an office like that. Have I? Neither with the IMC nor with the Shambhala group. And the date. Everything is reverberating in my head. September 29th. 2 p.m. 1400. But the year. 2002? Despair, fear, anger, that didn't feel good. That sounded like another door. Am I finally going to find them? It's the next day, so this must be the meeting. Ah, Tessa. There you are. Good. We've been waiting for you. Let's get to item, uh, two on the agenda. The book Our Final Adventure is overdue and cannot be published as planned. We have already booked everything. Magazines, stand-up displays, printing, everything. But we have no manuscript, and everything is set to start in two weeks, so... Does anyone have a 
short-term alternative available that is almost ready to print. Peter Smith's The Legacy. G.S. Queens, nothing is possible. Melissa Luna's no progress without obstacles. Melissa Luna? Informative. We shall discuss it. The final decision is mine, of course, but I would like to hear your arguments. What is she doing? She needs to go. The funeral is at 2 p.m. Okay, that's settled. G.S. Queens, nothing is possible. Good. Christine, contact the author. I want the current manuscript with all the necessary changes marked on Tessa's desk today. Understood. Are you okay? Mark! Yes, I'm fine. Why are you so passionate about this book? I've never seen you like this. It's not bad, but it's got some fundamental flaws. The things it tries to convey are interesting, but it's not what I'd call completely thought out. The planet is cool, but also sort of barren. It's mine. What? I wrote it. You're Melissa Luna? Yes, and I'm not sure you fully understood what it's trying to convey. It's about a single person making the difference. No matter how small a cog you may be, you just need to know how. That's a good sentiment, but, well, it doesn't quite come through. Why didn't you say that in the meeting? I wasn't quite myself, and, well, it didn't feel right. I can't defend it like it's my own book. And I had to get going and leave. Today is the funeral of Anthony's friend. I can't be late. Oh, damn! He's gonna kill me! When do you need to be there? 2 p.m. That's soon. Are you gonna make it? Well, first I'd have to find out where the event is happening, and then I'd have to get there. Do you have one of those newfangled sat-navs for your car? No. Okay, come with me. I'll take a road map and navigate you from the passenger seat. I'm finished here anyway. That would be perfect. Thank you. Let's get going then. She's not well. I'm... I was tired, and, and angry, and worn out. Oh, I... I think... No. Please keep calm. You've almost got it. Melissa Luna. She... she looks like me. Why? Why? You know it. Deep inside you know. You know exactly. But you have to be honest with yourself. It's going to hurt. I cannot change that. But this is the only way you can help yourself. My... My... That's my car. Tessa? Tessa, can you hear me? Tessa! Oh god, oh, he's injured and bleeding a lot. Hello? Hello? My name's Mark Bennett. We've had a car accident on the forest road from Springfield to Fairview. There's a creek next to us. Please, send help quickly. My friend is unconscious and injured. Come on, Tony, pick up. Yeah? Hello, Mark? Tony, we... I can't understand him anymore. He's lost consciousness. This is all my fault. And I pulled Mark into this. This... This church is not standing on the edge of a forest. I know it, but I don't know how. T-A-C-92 
Of course. Tessa and Anthony Carter married 1992. I'd like to help them, but they're both gone. I remember. Tony and I got married here. This used to be a happier place. Back then. I want to see what's inside. Mark, no! Please, this can't be happening. If all the other things were memories, is this one too? Or is it just me worrying? I was unconscious in the car. How should I know if he's dead? Please, don't be. What is that? This door doesn't fit into a church like this one. Sorry, Mark. I really hope he isn't actually dead. Ah! Oh, that's me! My sleep? But that can't... Wait a second. A hospital? That means I might still be alive! Wake up! Hello? Open up! Wake up! But at least that makes sense. How could I be experiencing all this if I was dead? I have to get out. Come to my senses. But how? I'm in a hospital, and somehow I have to go through that door. Maybe there's a way to what? What I'm quiet. Quiet. Just leave me alone. Let me think. Don't you understand? We have to get out of here. There has to be a way to wake up. I wish... I wish I could just do everything differently. What? <laughs> Let's see. Why? Melissa? Yes. Why, Tessa? What is your goal? 
You did what you always do. It's just in your nature. Even if you could change it, are you really going to betray yourself? Do you want to sit around doing nothing? We're in a coma. Don't you get it? We might die or just lie around for years immobilized. Don't you want to live again? Yes, I know. I don't want us to change just so we can live. It's a fight that you can't win. You won't change. It's hopeless. I already did. You knew this whole time? We, Tessa, we knew the whole time. But your head refused to think about it, and instead just threw itself into the next adventure. That's how much you devoted yourself to thrills and being alone. As an author, as an explorer. <laughs> you don't want to change. You're just scared of dying. You're fighting for your life because the only thing you don't want to explore is what lies beyond. Nothing else. But as soon as you're back, you'll be just like you always were. I'll show you who I am. Melissa, my alter ego that I used to chase my dreams, to take risks and go my own way. Maybe the part of me that doesn't want to be a part of something bigger. Ah, oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry. I know it's my turn tonight, but... Our little man is still awake and refusing to sleep. I think he'd like you to read him something. I'd love to. Great, thanks. I'm honestly pretty exhausted from work. Wait, where are you going? I need to take a shower. I'll be right back. I feel exhausted all of a sudden. Just like back then, I suppose. And I'm wearing completely different clothes. Can I change something, maybe? Maybe I can get him to sleep. Then we could relax afterwards. No older than a year. Finn, I am so, so sorry. I wish I could take you into my arms, but he's barely awake. Something's bothering him, though. How could I help him? I can't see anything, it's too dark. Hmm, which one of these? Look who it is. Yeah, you like him, don't you? 
Come here. I'll tuck you in nice and snug. That's <laughs> Once upon a time. And he's asleep. <laughs> I remember I used to watch him sleep. Ah, uh, I needed that. Uh, oh, hey, it worked. You just need to know how. Yeah, well, you've got a knack for it. It's late, and I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. Are you coming? I don't think that's possible, but... Uh, wait... I'm sorry. Oh, Tessa, I know how you feel. Too late. Not real. I know. But it was nice anyways. That was too difficult. <laughs> It was exhausting to take care of him after work, but now it feels more like a blessing. I suppose it used to be too much of a routine. I took it for granted. I would have definitely had the energy if I just forced myself a little. Melissa, my oh, maybe the part of me that doesn't want. Oh, despair. Bear. Oh, despair. I should perhaps look more closely before diving into any of the feelings. Yes, that felt lovely. Before I do anything differently, I have to look at this book. Mark said something about a planet. Yes! <laughs> I can move the mouse. Let's see. Melissa Luna. No progress without obstacles. I'll just scroll through it. A man called Nolan crashes on a planet with no emergency signal. There's a space station in front of him. The letters IMC are visible. He finds out that he used to be this station's commander. I wrote that. I can even vaguely remember how I did it. It was at this desk. I was alone with nothing but the buzzing of lights to keep me company. I submitted it under the name Melissa Luna. She was my pseudonym, so I could write the book in peace without intervention. Tony had no idea and probably kept wondering why I was at work so long. All so I could do it without help. But then I sort of experienced my own book. 
And because Melissa was the author, she was able to change everything in the story just how she needed it. Remove people, fly, everything. But how is that? Hello? Hi, it's me. Still at work after all? I had a lot to do. I see. Alright. I tried to call you earlier. Guess you haven't listened to your voicemail. I got distracted by other things. More important things. I understand. No, just... Uh, I'm sorry. Would have been important to me, but... Anyway, I'm gonna need my black tie tomorrow. Mark borrowed that, right? Have you got it? No, sadly, he... didn't have it with him. I see. Well, if you'd asked earlier. But everything is prepared for tomorrow? There's a meeting at 11 a.m. I'll rush through that, then I'll get in the car and be there at 2. <laughs> That's something, at least. I have a few things to sort out, and then I'll go to bed. Please don't make too much noise when you get home. See you tomorrow. See you then. I love you. I'm sorry. What am I doing here? It's too late to change anything. When was that call again? Oh, it worked. Hey, Tessa, are you okay? Your phone just rang. It was your husband. Sorry, I saw it in passing. Thanks. No problem. Are you sure? You've been a bit worn out these past few days and weeks. Yeah. Mm, yes. I'm fine. Good. I hope... I already forgot what I was supposed to do for Tony. Good thing he left me a message. I got this frame for Christmas from a colleague. <laughs> the sample picture is still inside it. The condolence card for Noah's funeral tomorrow. It still needs our picture and my signature. I'll take a pen, too. Mark? Hey, Tessa. What can I do for you? Tessa? Oh, sorry. Do you remember the black tie you borrowed? I need it back. Sure. I've got it right here. Forms, applications, documents. I'll take one of the vacation forms. And... finished. Let's see... Hmm... Yes, I can approve that. Thanks.
as neatly as possible. Done. Now all I need is a photo. The card is inside the printer, ready to go. The picture fits perfectly onto the card. I should have everything. Hey honey, thanks for calling me back. So, what's the deal? I think I've got everything. Good. The condolence card is ready too. Fresh off the press and signed. Great, thank you. I've got your black tie and my vacation has been approved. Oh, excellent. Are you gonna be at work much longer? No. I think I'm almost ready to come home. Great. But you sound unhappy. You can stay if you've got something important to finish. I'm pretty exhausted from work, and I'm probably going to fall asleep on the couch. You'll think of tomorrow? How could I forget Noah? Good. I love you. See you later. I love you too. See you. Simply put in hindsight, it probably wouldn't even have had any negative impact on my job or the book. Still, back then I ignored those facts, telling myself I had to concentrate on what I was working on. If there was any job I was forcing myself to do, then it was one I imposed on myself. There's one door left, but is this still not enough to wake up? I understand now. All of it. It's locked. Yes, that felt lovely. It's the next day, so this must be the meeting.
to get this meeting finished before 1 p.m. I'm sure the others are going to try to get their suggestions through. I don't really care which book makes it, as long as Mr. Bishop decides quickly. Ah, Tessa, there you are. Good. We've been waiting for you. We've saved the most important point on the agenda until you arrived. The book Our Final Adventure needs to be replaced. G.S. Queen's Nothing is Possible. Peter Smith's The Legacy. I don't care. You don't care? Tessa, this is serious, and I'd like my lead editor to have an opinion. What's your suggestion? Melissa Luna's No Progress Without Obstacles. Hmm. Very informative. Let's discuss which title you'd prefer. I'm sure you've all made notes. What do you think about the book Nothing is Possible? This one cuts deep. Something that sticks with you for a long time. That's right. These stories are perfect if you like horror. That is correct. Some of the stories are pretty disturbing and scary. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Nothing is Possible has something going for it. What do you think about the book no progress without obstacles. The flying robot is a real showstopper full of personality. That's right. It conveys a nice dark atmosphere. That is correct. Every answer just opens up a new question. Thrilling! That's right. Good. That's me sold. Very informative. We will publish No Progress Without Obstacles. The others just can't keep up. Okay. Christine, you contact the author. I want the current manuscript with all of the changes made to the last version on Tessa's desk today. Tessa, are you okay? I, uh, yeah. Just for a second, everything was sort of unreal and overwhelming. I... Then I realized... It is. I've got to do something later. Something private. But I'll take care of this first thing tomorrow morning. That's fine. Ethan, inform the marketing department, adjust the graphics and texts. And you, Tessa, you polish that book tomorrow. You know how much we're banking on this book's success. Got it. Excellent. Let's get to work then. Give me your number. Hmm? The author's number, so I can tell her how heroically you fought for her. I mean, it was like a lioness defending her cubs. She was. What do you mean? It's my book. It's yours? Yes, it is. What do you think? Hmm, it's not bad. It's got some flaws. The message it tries to convey is interesting, but it needs some work. Maybe you should make the planet more alive. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You're a good friend. To be honest, I just wanted to get the meeting over quickly. Why? What are you up to? It's one of Tony's colleagues' funeral today, at 2 p.m., and I have to find a way of getting there. Oh, my condolences, but that might be difficult. I could accompany you and navigate. I'll manage. I should have enough time, but thanks, Mark. For everything. Hey, I'm just a technician. Nothing to thank me for. 
<laughs> Whatever you say. See you later, then. Time to fight some printers. See you. It worked! We didn't crash into the tree! I should have helped Tony with his problems instead of leaving them all to him. We should have solved them as a team. That would have helped a lot, I think. I'm sure this oh-so-important meeting could have been postponed if I wanted it to. <laughs> but I was concentrating on myself too much. But all that would have only avoided this accident. Everything would have come crashing down at some point. If I kept on with these two jobs. My beloved Tessa, you are my rock, my monolith. The path we took hasn't always been easy, and I suppose it won't get any easier in the future. But I know I want to take it with you, and that we'll solve any problems we might face together. You were afraid of this day, and I understand why. Maybe more than anyone else. We all know you as someone who takes care of everything. Someone who goes through life with courage who never leaves anything behind and always keeps cool in the most difficult of situations to find a solution. We love and admire you for that. Especially me, as you know. But I also know how much it takes for you to play the part of a goal-driven person who will be steadfast and immovable as a rock in an earthquake. Self-doubts and setbacks get to you, especially in your job as an author. And that just makes me love you even more. Not because you have weaknesses, but because you can still see them next to all your strengths and qualities. Even though you try not to show too much of it. I'm not here today to be a burden, to be someone you have to take care of. The two of us, this relationship, shouldn't be something else for you to take care of. I want it to be a thing of mutual support. Because the more you use your strength to take the burden off others, the happier we are seeing you without those weights on your shoulder at all. Seeing you laugh, content, and free. I want to make sure you can be that way more often. Even though you won't make it easy for me. <laughs> I want to fight. To be allowed to support you. So you can go through life unburdened and do what you love. Not because it's your duty, but because you want to. Let me be your cornerstone. And as a symbol of that, I'd like to give you this amulet. It contains a piece of a meteorite. It's rugged, imperfect, and has had to go through a lot to get here. And yet it's breathtakingly beautiful. With an insane amount of effort and pain, you could turn it into something perfect. Or you could just accept that this splinter shows that it's part of something bigger. With all its imperfections. I don't need you to be a perfect rock that can withstand anything. We're both splinters that complement each other. Both of us make a we. Both of us form one monolith. Together. Except for the amulet Tony gave me on our wedding. I'm 
I'm in a hospital, and somehow I have to go through that door. Anthony gave this to me on our wedding. It's a piece of meteorite. It could have all been avoided. With small things again and again over the last few years. I should have listened to him more. Trusted him more. He only wanted to help. Instead, I tried doing it alone, no matter how hard it was. And now, all the doors are closed. Is there really no way? It looks like his hand is grasping something, but it's empty. Anthony, it looks like his hand is grasping something, but it's empty. Melissa, my maybe the part of me that Finn and Anthony. I hope to see them again soon, not just in my memories. That's the amulet Tony gave us on our wedding. It was supposed to remind us that we're part of something bigger. That it's okay to make mistakes and get help. Our family is what's bigger. Our family accepts our mistakes and helps us. You're a part of me. You're a part of this family. You're saying you can see a way out for yourself? For... Even though we would have to change? Yes. But you're right too. We always wanted to be steadfast, independent, and autonomous. And we are. But we have to make a choice. We can either be alone and never compromise again and show everyone what we can do. Or we can be together with Anthony and Finn. Which would mean compromises for all of us. I've made my decision. Independently. Autonomously. 
in their favor. But you have to come with me. Otherwise, we'll just keep fighting in here forever, never achieving anything. When we wake up, you're going to have to account for all this. And implementing and keeping these changes will be... unpleasant. Fine. Let's try it. I think I'd be a good lead editor. Well, that'd be perfect for you. You probably wouldn't have time to write your own books anymore, but I'm sure you'll be happy working on other books too. But don't just do it for the money. I'm still here too. It's not just your responsibility. I... I think I understand. Yes? It was all inside my head. Correct. Some of it were your real memories, but you mixed up fact and fiction, made things more exciting. It was a long road of self-discovery before you could admit it to yourself. I'm glad to see you've come through. Who knows what might have happened to you? We couldn't risk confronting you with the truth. You had to find it out for yourself. Tony and Finn, they... are they... You can come in now. Mommy! Easy, Finn. How are you feeling? Do you remember... well... everything? Yes, I think so. I know. All about the accident, and that I'm not flying around in space. I am so sorry for everything. Mark, he... He survived, even in better condition than you. I'm so glad. Tony, I have to tell you something. It's okay. Mark told me about your book. I had thrown myself into writing so much. The accident. None of this would have happened if I had gone to the funeral with you in time. That's not the point, Tessa. It's all right. I thought I had lost you. Not only now, but for a long time because of my behavior. I would never blame you for wanting to do what you love. You've written and designed worlds, lived your dream. I understand that. But I kind of lost control of it. Well, that's why you should have talked to me. I would have helped you, supported you. Together, we would have found a solution. Thank you, Tony. Let's talk in peace as soon as I get home. Mama? Yes, honey? Dad said you got lost. In your head, I mean. That's one way of putting it. I knew you'd find your way home, like you always do. You always knew a way to end the stories you wrote, and when they're ready, you always came to me. So I wasn't scared. Now I am completely back again, with you. Will you buy me the new toy spaceship you promised me now? Absolutely. 